We're gonna take you down to San Antonio, Texas where I'm at the Hall of Fans in the house. I wanna feature my brother, Sergio. Happy 21st birthday, Vestido Blanco, suena la corona, here we go. Con tu vestido blanco Y cuando te iba a faltar Que todos te están mirando Ay, qué bonita te ves Con tu vestido blanco Y cuando te iba a faltar Que todos te están mirando Porque de celos tú me estás matando No, no, por favor Ya no te pongas tu vestido blanco No, no, por favor Porque de celos tú me estás matando That's some jams right there, man. Ladies and gentlemen, AJ Castillo here with us tonight, man. What's going on, AJ? What's going on, brother? How you doing? Dude, where was that at? That was in Tucson, Arizona. Tucson, Arizona. Tucson, was that Arizona, a casino brother. or was it a... Yeah, it's at a Casino del Sol. Casino del yeah. Sol? Yeah, brother. How long ago was that, bro? Probably about seven years ago. Seven maybe. years ago? Maybe a little bit longer. I what, seven or eight years. When the video started, I thought, what is The Rock doing I playing guess, Tejano? I guess oh, I'm on. Yeah. <laughs> if you can smell what the rock, the rock is, is cooking. cooking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bro, I, I just found the video. I, I had never seen it. Really? Yeah. yeah. You know, there's so much stuff on the internet. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm, I'm just, I put, I put on YouTube and I surf around. And then all of a sudden, you know, a, a video pops up and I'm like, what? Where did this come from? So, you know, when you're on YouTube, you get a lot of stuff recommended mm-hmm. by what you're listening to, you know? Yeah. And this video popped up, and I said, man, this is great. Is this new or what? And I say it's like seven well, years old, something like that, bro. Where you been at, Rock? Yeah. Well, dude, the, one of the very first interviews I did for this channel, mm-hmm. when I was pre-recording, this is pre-COVID, mm-hmm. uh, I went to go see you at Chewy Studio. Yeah. And we sat down, and we talked about that. That was basically the very first time I had ever met you. Yeah. And you had a, a cumbia thing going on, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, and but I I never really looked into your roots, and now that I started looking into them, I'm like, dude, you've got some amazing talent, bro. Thank you, brother. Fantastic, bro. Thank How you, you been, man? I've been good, man. Thanks to God, everything's going great, and just working, and uh, man, it's just man, it's an unbelievable journey. Yeah, and uh, yeah, we're and it's in, still we're going, man. It's just getting started. I mean, started. you've got so many things going, ladies I and gentlemen. I have a lot of shit going on, brother. This guy's got some stuff going on, man. He's a he's a multi entrepreneurial uh, entrepreneurial <laughs> dude, a musician, you know. And but we'll talk to him and about it in just a bit. Want to welcome everybody to a hashtag PBT Wednesday Night Live. Hello. Andamos un poquito trastornado porque anoche tuvimos programa con Rubén Garza, un bajo sexto, y ahora tenemos un acordeonista. So anoche el programa con Rubén Garza. Was absolutely amazing. Él era el bajo sexto de Rubén Vela por mucho tiempo y tuvo con los dos Gilbertos 32 años. Y las historias que nos dio anoche estaban awesome, ladies and gentlemen. So if you haven't watched that show, you still got you can still go back and watch it. But tonight's is live, and uh, it's brought to you by 
Bajos Sextos M3. And Woo! these Bajos Sextos are being... Uh, the, the, everybody's playing them. And uh, they're just amazing quality bass, uh, quality Bajos Sextos. Uh, professional quality bajos to cover your musical needs at an affordable price compared to other brands. A hundred percent. Bajo Sexos M3 have uh, been used by professional bajo players such as Joe Farias from uh, David uh, Farias and the Farias Hermanos Farias, ¿verdad? Mario Quintero de los Tucanes, este, Pepe Lizondo del Grupo Pesado, Poncho Quesada from Los Dos Carnales, and other grand musicians from the U.S. and Mexico de la más alta calidad. Ahí está Joe y David y pues ahí están jamming backstage antes de una tocada. Y pues ya sabes, sacan el bajo sexo, el acordeón Y es todo lo que necesitas para prender el bote Y prenderte el bote Papá, asustame one time You can get your customized Hand-built 100% professional quality Bajo sexto by calling 210-717 And uh, the last three num Four numbers, 6834 Okay, 210-717-6834 And we want you to call them up and uh, get yourself a bajo sexto, the best in the business. As a matter of fact, they sent me some video of uh, Los Tucanes and Los Dos Carnales with the bajo sexto. We'll be playing them and putting them on in the next week, all right? So, muchas gracias, bajo sextos M3. Also want to thank Dr. T's primary care for men and oh, women, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Si estás teniendo problemas en la recámara y no le has dado, tú sabes, la atención que merece tu señora. Hey, Rock, and, and then with uh, Valentine's? Yeah. Or how we say in the valley, Valentine's? Hey, Valentine's. Valentine's. <laughs> Valentine's. <laughs> tú sabes. Pero ya sabes, si no quieres que se oiga esto la noche de Valentine's cuando rentes cuarto en el Holiday Inn. Okay. Oh, that's terrible. Tienes que ir a drtsprimarycare.com y si le pides el Trimix, el Valentine's va a durar dos, tres días, papá. Cállate la boca, shut up. Beware. Te van a estar haciendo tortillas recién hechas y carne y sal, frijolitos en bola y la chingada. Hombre, qué bárbaro. Cállate. drtsprimarycare.com. Get some of that hormone replacement therapy, weight loss therapy, IV vitamin infusion, peptide therapy. Y tú diles que los mandó hashtag PVT, papá. Asústame, papá. And then before we get to the next one, <laughs> Corona Formal Wear, 508 West Trenton Road, Edinburgh, Texas. Si necesitan un taxido, that's the place to go, 956-609-9064, South Texas Formal Wear, FormalWear.com. You can find them on Facebook, Corona Formal Wear, and Instagram, Corona Formal Wear, TikTok también lo mismo. Established since 1975, I've been going to Corona since the early 90s when I started ring announcing, uh, boxing. Four locations, Valley Wide and Brownsville, se llaman Armando's Tuxedos, Harlingen, Armando's Tuxedos, West Saco, Corona Formal Wear, Edinburgh, Corona Formal Wear, that's the one I go to. And uh, weddings, quinceañeras, ahí vienen los proms también, you want to yes. look sharp, fantastic. I was just going to say that, proms coming up. Wait, that's in May, right, babe? That's around May, yeah. All right, all right and if you want to be part of the show, all you have to do is give us a text, 956-641-641. Three two four one. If you want to, because uh, we're gonna have some openings after today, because there's a couple of uh, sponsors that their contracts have ended and stuff. I don't know if they'll be renewing or not, but if they don't, you'll have the opportunity to be able to be seen your product, your business, whatever you're doing, all over the nation with hashtag PVT. Asusta me one time. Now let's go to my wife. Uh, Rally, she's our producer. What's going on, sweetheart? Hey, shout out to everyone that's on the chat zone already. Rick Rodies, Johnny Borges, M. Garza, Rudy Valenzuela, and all the ladies as well. Thank you guys for hanging out with us tonight. Chaz Corona is uh, taking care of the chats. If you want to ask a question or uh, say a comment and you want us to say it out on uh, the on the air, just uh, super chat us, all right? Some more shout outs going out to, from Odessa, Checo Lujan. From Austin, Carlos Garcia. From San Antonio, Armando G. Gilbert Martinez, he's in Hereford, Texas. Hey. And the Tejano Cowboy, he's in Houston. And Humberto Velasquez, he's in Round Lake Heights, Illinois. Or how we say in San Benito, Illinois. Illinois. <laughs> Illinois. Because <laughs> there's an S. Hey. And in San Benito, we say things that are more, more better. better. Yeah, more oh, better. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'll be here in the chat zone if you have any questions for our guest tonight. So we'll keep your company. I'm going to try some of this music. Uh, this one, is, I think, I, I don't know if this is your first, second, or third album, man. AJ? Oh, shit. I haven't heard this song in years. 
Oi. Oh my uh, god, I love it. Puro pinche Cinemax after hey, dark, papa. It is. <laughs> Cinemax. Yeah. Is this Chardonnay? <laughs> Dude, he's doing accordion on this song. It's crazy. When I heard this, I was like, how old were you when you did this, bro? It's probably about 21. 21? 22. Yeah. Damn, bro. Oi. When I was listening to this, oh, and like I stumbled onto it because I was going through all your, your music, you know? I was wild. I did crazy ass shit. Este jale no lo tocan en el radio, oh, carnal. Right. Este jale nomás es para tú nomás, <laughs> para lo que te gusta a ti, ¿verdad? Este I mean, jale de negros no, no yeah. trabaja. <laughs> hey, it, it does. I mean, it, it, it just needs to be exposed, dude. You know what I mean? I'm not black, baby. Is that your dad on saxophone? No, man. No. That's not my dad. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> He doesn't know who that is. He don't, don't, know, know, that he don't watch uh, wrestling. <laughs> Val Venus. ¿Qué pasó, jefe? How you doing? Great. I got my pops with me, man. Sí, Arturo es el, el pistolero de he, AJ. He didn't pistolero. think he was going to be on, on yeah. camera today, but Mueve I got Mueve el micrófono un poquito para abajo, sí, porque... Uh, no, 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 más hazlo así. No, the other towards way, the other way. Ah, dale, dale. Ah, órale. Este toca saxofón, no canta, no sabe. <laughs> no, sí canto también. Así, así. Sí, sí. Ya grabé los CDs que te dije. Sí, yeah, pues I'm telling you, my friend Danny Garcia from VOD sent me a picture of a CD and it's you laying next to a saxophone. Saludos para Danny. Yeah, and uh, pues... Uh, ¿Cómo te está en Norturo? How you doing, bro? Pues bien, gracias a Dios aquí, pues con los Young Guns. Ajá. Acuérdense, uh, pues AJ y Love y otro chamaco Sergio también. So uh -huh. ahí andamos echándole ganas. That's about it. Yeah. Trying to do it to it. Oye, ¿usted es originalmente de ahí de Austin o qué? De cerca de Austin, Elgin, Texas. Elgin, yeah, Texas. Elgin, yeah. ¿Qué? Is that that, East, that's, capital, that's the capital of the chorizo. Ah, yeah. uh, sí. Yeah, y también. You never heard of Elgin, Texas? Well, no, I never heard of Elgin, oh, Texas. It's uh, about 24 miles going east, going towards Houston. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they're famous también. Look it up. Uh, South side. Hot gut sausage. Sí. Elgin. Mm -hmm. sausage. Yendo para allá para Brenham y para. Yes, sir. Orale. Por el 290. Ahí andamos. Un saludo para los de uh, Top Floor Cars, Classic Cars, and Brenham. They're a sponsor of ours. Oh, really? Y fuimos para allá. Está bien bonito. It's beautiful. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Blue, beautiful. Blue Bell Ice Cream. Sí, mm -hmm. Blue Bell Ice Cream. Y el pueblito, man, it's like going into the old history. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you go through LaGrange. We went through LaGrange and through all those little oh, uh, yeah. round top, I think it's called. Puros antique towns, bro. Yep. Mm -hmm. And they have like tents everywhere. They have like a, I don't know, a big old festival over there and stuff. Mm -hmm. They the probably do. Yeah. Ustedes no salen mucho para ese lado o qué? Ah, un poco vamos como para Houston, pero mainly we travel acá para a lot of West Texas. Mm -hmm. Y un, ahorita están tan, tan viviendo en Elgin todavía? Or? No, yo vivo en, en Buda. Buda. Ah, todos oh. se movieron para Buda. ¿verdad? Todos se movieron para Buda. They sí. pushed everybody out. Right? Yeah. Ahí estás tú también. No, man, I live in, uh, I, well, I live in Austin and I have a spot in San Marcos también. Órale. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Y Buda, ¿sabes por qué le dicen Buda a, a la ciudad esa? Dime. Porque era la tierra de una viuda. Ojo, de una viuda. Sí, una viuda. por eso no es Buda, es Buda. Sí, porque pescaban los, los chavos que los paraban los Texas Rangers a los chavos que andaban ahí y les preguntaban, where are you all coming from? Venemos en Calaviuda. En Calaviuda. También. And that's the name. That's the story that they told me. Who I'm told you sure. that? My, my cousin, he lives there in Buda. And he oh. told me, I think that's the story. Se me hace que está echando mentiras, eh. Oh, I think I, I think we looked it up. Remember, we looked it up the last time. Uh, wow. did, did we, babe? I yeah, think we did. Maybe so. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. We looked it up the last yeah. time, and La, he did say that. Aquí tengo fact checker, Well, I mean, I don't know if it was a reliable source online, but that's what it said online. I don't get well, any. So. I don't get any Pinocchios on this one, bro. <laughs> the source was Dario Puig. Dario Puig, right? Oh. Yeah. So reliable source. Here's another one of AJ's. Oh, yeah. Man, this is the Valentine's list. If you play this on the 14th, don't me that. You know the great thing about it, bro, is that it's on the internet. Because if it was just CDs, <laughs> it'd be hard to find. Yeah, yeah, no, it's out there. But on the internet, you, you know can what? find everything. Bro. I haven't heard these songs in. 12 years. 12 years. Whenever they came, that was the last time. Minutes. That was the last time I heard these songs, bro. You, did, you should do an unplugged video of all these songs, you bro. Should. Man, wearing sexy content. women in there. And yeah, wearing a robe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Champagne bro, for bottles. Valentine's, for Valentine's. Simon Carnaval. Valentine's. Valentine's. Yeah, Valentine's. Yeah. Valentine's. Yeah. Valentine's. <laughs> it gotta be the B, bro. Yeah. Right? <laughs> you know what? That shit does sound good. 
and Manuel goes to Bangkok. After dark, join. Dude, I can get into this stuff, bro. AJ Castillo with Emmanuel. Don't forget to call Dr. T. (laughs) (laughs) That's what you call branding. Yeah. Dr. T's primary care for men. Arturo, yeah, the volada. Yeah. No, Arturo, tienen un producto ahí, Arturo. No me cállate la boca para parecer un chavalo de 25 años, carnal. No lo necesito. No. Cállate la boca. Come on, man. No me rock. Arturo with like three oysters. He's ready for the whole yeah, night. Yeah. <laughs> no más dame un pinche plato de camarones. <laughs> <laughs> What were you going to say, AJ? AJ, AJ we don't, don't, don't want to hear that AJ shit. Don't 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 that 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 <laughs> we don't talk like that, man. Yeah, yeah, we, don't we don't talk like that. Uh, we no. don't have a relationship like that. No. They thought I'm like, no, <laughs> what do you all talk about for four and a half hours man, since I've been down here, bro? We talk about the industry. We talk about business. We talk about, can you believe this? Can you believe that? Mm-hmm. But not Trimix. Yep. No, exactly. No, 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 no. Nothing sexual. Like, no, 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 no. Like, no. what was, like, one of the major... Conversations on the way down today to the. You don't want to know that. Well, you know, I mean, is it? You know, is it? Well, let's ask AJ this: When you were growing up, when you were a young man, did you have the talk about? Well, Mijo, you're growing up. And, Birds and the bees. Yeah, did you have that talk? No, and, man. Was Birds it very graphic? No, or? hell no. We, they never talked about that to me. No, no. so you just no. No. we never did. I didn't. No. I learned all about that with my uncle's Playboy magazines, bro. I, I didn't know. And the, <laughs> Cuando no estaban los Playboy magazines me llevaba al Sears Carol Lock para el baño, carnal. Yeah. Yeah. JC Penney, las lingerie y los calzones. Oh, yeah. no, that, no. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah. Man. The struggle was real, right, right? Yeah, hell yeah. Sears oh, yeah. catalog. Man. Was this album, was this like your first album or is it? No, uh, that that was my second album. I think that the, was my second album. That came out in I think 2011, something like that. Yeah. There there's yeah, uh, that shit was wild. This, I don't know what I was thinking. This is the first album. <laughs> no, hey, that, that's the first album right here. You were just, you were playing what you love. That's yeah. crazy, right? Yeah. Your erogenous zone took over. Mm-hmm. This song is called The Feeling I Get. This was the first song I ever recorded as AJ Castillo, the artist. This was the first song I ever recorded. Uh, is and this it, Barry White? No, but this is Norman Brown. <laughs> Come here, baby. It's Norman Brown. Hoy, hoy la cordeón. I like that the accordion's in there. Fuck yeah. Justify my love. Yeah. Ain't nobody, no, nobody's ever played the accordion on stuff no, like this. No, no. Well, Steve Jordan. Well, Steve Jordan he, he is did. Steve Jordan, but he never played on like like smooth jazz no, songs. No. You know what I mean? Yeah. He was a little rougher with the, with yeah, the jazz. Yeah, he was a little bit rougher. Yeah. But he's still the greatest of all time. When I used to hang out with Jesus. He's just, still the Michael Jordan of the accordion. Bro, let me tell you, when I used to hang out with Steve, we used to party for three days. I believe days, it. And we'd be in this little old trailer behind some orchards south of old 83 between Westlaco and Mercedes like stashed out bro and they had a big screen TV and it was just on you know it had they had satellite right television and they had it you know how the satellite gives you those uh, those music channels yeah 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 and it was just on jazz all okay. freaking day like music and night. choice music choice yeah it was just on the jazz mm-hmm. channel and that's all that they were absorbing 24 hours and that was just the stuff that you know that Steve yeah. was getting into man. He 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 loved the jazz, and you could tell on on, on his playing. You know, oh, when he yeah. was doing some Bro. of those runs and those ends that were kind kind of kind of off key, but they were on. Yeah, key, yeah, you know? yeah. No outer space shit. Yeah. So the way the way I came to know Esteban Jordan was, you know, I started playing the accordion. Empecé tocando el acordeón a los 10 años. I was mm-hmm. 10 years old. Sí. Right. Started playing accordion. And I was listening to the radio. I was listening to David Garza. I was listening to uh, Tropa F. You know, the songs you hear, the Chamacos. Yeah. The accordion. Sí. And, you know, I was learning here and there these songs. I was 12 years old, 13 years old. My dad said, man, you ought to start listening to this guy. This guy is fucking badass. Mm-hmm. And he introduced me to Esteban Jordan, Steve Jordan. Yeah. And, man, when I heard Steve Jordan, that changed my life. Yeah. That's when that's when I knew I want to play this shit. Yeah, because because all the other shit that these guys are playing, that's great, and it, it's it was commercial, mm-hmm. right? But I didn't know what commercial was. I was younger, mm-hmm. but I wanted to play the hard shit. What Esteban Jordan played, I, that was tough. Yeah. So my dad introduced me to Esteban Jordan. So that's always been me and my dad's bond was was Esteban Jordan. He used to listen to all the shit. I we we still listen to his music. You know, I grew up uh, coming from an orquesta family, so we listened to Isidro Lopez. We listened to Tortilla Factory. We listened to. 
uh, little Joe, this guy tells me stories about all these guys, the old days, orchestra music. So sí. I grew up with horns. It's so crazy that I play the accordion. Sí. You know, so even going back to a story, man, I was in, uh, we were, I was probably 15 years old. And uh, Steve Jordan was playing IE in Austin at a, at a club. We, my dad said, man, let's go check him out. Let's yeah, go, yeah. let's go check him out. We awesome. got, and I didn't think they were going to let me in. I was 14, 15 years old. And we got to the club. I swear to God, there was three people in the whole club. Three people. Uh-huh. So they let me in. They let me and my dad in. We checked them out. They fucking jammed for like an hour straight. Yeah. They went on break. And my dad said, fuck it, let's go to the back. We walked on stage, went to the back room, and my dad's like, hey, Steve, I want to introduce you to my son, man. This is this is my son. He plays accordion. You know, he wanted to meet you. He's one of your biggest fans. Mm-hmm. And Steve Jordan was all you know, he, he, didn't, he didn't give a fuck. Yeah, yeah. And he was just cool, you know. He and, was eccentric. Yeah, he was he was on another level. Sí, es otro pedo. And, uh, and I was I was a chavalón, and I was, Steve, you know, Mr. Mr. Jordan, can I, can I play your accordion? And he said, no. I said, Mr. 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 Jordan, can I please play your accordion? Bien, oh, yeah. Mr. Mr. No, 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 nobody, nobody touches my accordions, nobody. And I was like, God damn! So we we kept hanging out, hanging around for a while. And my dad told me, what you see back here, you better not say a fucking thing mm-hmm. to your mom. Yeah, because there was some crazy shit going on. Oh there was some shit I've never seen in my life. Yeah, when you're 14, 15 years old, you know. Yeah, yeah. You said it. You were partying with him. Oh, hell yeah. So we're there, man. And after a while, you know, a few more minutes. Please. Can I see your accordion? Yeah. Go, go get go get it. <laughs> so I got, went to the stage, got the accordion, Steve Jordan's accordion. Uh-huh. And I played that shit. And I told my dad, I was like, man, this fucking shit, this thing plays by itself. It's magic. Ah, <laughs> I swear right. to God, oh, dude. Wow, magic. I swear crazy. to God, I played it. Magic. And I was like, oh, la like, wow. Like that yeah. shit, the action. Had all kinds like of voodoo you're shit. An, you know, if you play an instrument, it's like, damn, the action is, is the most important thing. If you play guitar, you play bass, whatever you play, like, mm-hmm. the action on this shit was a la verga. Like, oh, my God. Like, it, my hands would just float my mm-hmm. fingers. <laughs> the and spirit I, and, of Steve Jordan. And I told him, oh, my God. I told him, it's amazing. He says, it plays by itself. <laughs> oh, my God. I, yeah, dude, I swear to God, yeah. my, my dad was there with me, man. So, Man, where were the f- cell phones back then to record that shit, right? Oh, oh, I wish. Oh, I wish. Man. I wish. Damn. I wish. You know, it's crazy. Like you said, there was three people, but he'd always play like like there was 3,000 people. It, it didn't, didn't matter, matter to him. And he was a type of artist, Steve Jordan, that would attract like all the musicians of the town. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. it. You know, he, he was the best. He wasn't a commercial guy. No, no, no. He wasn't looking for that hit. He didn't. He, he didn't wanted want to just play. And but you, but make you know what? Good. All of his songs were hits. Mm-hmm. Like his, his, like if you go back and listen to his music, his shit is catchy. All cumbia of his songs con are, salsa. All his songs are catchy. Sean, la cumbia de Sean. El gancho. El gancho. El gancho. Soy de Texas. Soy de Texas. Este, uh, nunca irás al cielo si te portas mal. El Piris Wiris. El Piris Wiris. Una estrellita lloró. Yeah, yeah. El Johnny. Yeah. El Johnny. Yeah. Pero it, it's, it's crazy how he really never got to a, a status where commercially because he, he was the biggest ever. He, she, she could have been. He, no, no, no. He should have been. But it, he... He was on another planet, bro. His yeah. shit is still too advanced for today. Yeah, yeah. If you were to put that out brand new, people still wouldn't yeah, get it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and, we're in the simplicity days right now. And he would do covers, too. He did the Rancan Can, the Tito Puente. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did the Righteous Brothers. You've lost that loving mm-hmm. feeling. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then he would do blues. And I mean, this guy was out of this world, like he was you the said, best. bro. He was the best. And you got to meet him at a uh, very young age. I was young. That's crazy, man. Yeah. Oye, Arturo, ¿y tú tocas con orquestas? ¿Con qué orquestas tocaste? <laughs> Mainly just local, loco allí. Ahí, en, ahí en Austin está Agustín Ramírez, está Carlos Miranda, todos esos. Pues, Carlos Miranda, I mean, I met Rubén all those. Ramos. Rubén Ramos. I've met them, you know what I mean? Sí. They're a lot older than me. Ah, sí. No, yeah. tiene 80 something. <laughs> yeah, Oye, yeah. pero se ve muy conservado. Rubén lo viene en la oh, Hall yeah. of Fame. Yeah, no, he's, he's, he's going to be here, ladies and gentlemen, on the show at the end great. of February. Ruben, you know what? He Ruben. works. He works out all the time, still. Yeah. And golfs. I see him at Gold's Gym every day. Yeah, neta. Checking out all the babes. No man, man. <laughs> he's he's there in the treadmill and chingas. He's always on the treadmill, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he's always been. And nunca fue vicioso that I've ever known. You know where he drinks a lot or does all that partying stuff. He was always straight up. I mean, uh, that I know. I'm never really like. I mean. Some people can drink and party no, normally, yeah. Yeah. and some people can't, like me, right? 
But and I knew the 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 musicians back in the day that mm -hmm. were hardcore. And those yeah. are the guys I'd hang out with. The normal guys <laughs> I'd hang out with a little bit, and then I'd you know, they watch them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then you were playing locally there. Yeah. I played locally. I've been uh, just local bands. Y como te dije, como in '84 we started a band with my brothers. Mm -hmm. But I played with other local bands. Just but during that time I was playing with these other bands. Uh, never heard of them. Uh, used to be Paco Rodriguez mm -hmm. out of Austin, and then I played with another guy named Manny and the CEOs. And con Paco, it was crazy because we traveled a lot all over. I mean, West Texas, San Antonio. That's how I met like Steve Jordan. Mm -hmm. Steve, I mean, I didn't know personally, but you know, we'd meet, we'd play. We, we used to play in at Bumblebee, we'd play in Carousel, Tocamos, Paya pa, pa Lubbock, Amarillo, Yadava, mm -hmm. Paco. I don't know how he did it. But siempre he had gigs with bands como uh, Agustin Ramirez, uh, Little Joe, Big Lou. Factory, Big Lou. Remember Big Lou? Oh, yeah, man. Big Lou. Man. The, we used to me do, I mean, yeah. yeah, we, we me played with Big Lou. I knew all those guys. I so bet I you was, a lot of people watching right now don't know who Big Lou is. They oh, need to Big check Lou, him out. That's, old me piden, That's old school, me bro. Me uh, me piden, yeah. A poco, no. Yeah. He's the one that came out que tengo. He came out with all that stuff. So I played with all these bands. I mean, not all of them, just few, but I met so many because they're, that circle, we'd be playing with all these bands. Yeah. Puro músico bruto, no? And then, you know, the 70s, there were so many orquestas, and then in the 80s, they started, like, yeah, filtering out, and the, the, the horns were being, uh, you know, taken over by keyboards, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I never liked that keyboard horn sound, dude. I like it. The very first time I saw Little Joe was probably about 1981, 1980. Uh, my mom dropped me off at the Catholic War Veterans on 1015 between Mercedes and Wessico on an Easter Sunday night. And she just dropped me off because I was at home board. We didn't have no damn cell phones, no iPads, no internet, no video games. Mm -hmm. So then she just, I was being a rascal. She goes and she dumps me. I go in there and I'm like, I'm in the heavy metal and shit, right? <laughs> and I walk in there and I walked out with a total change in life, you know, because uh. I saw Little Joe and his entire orchestra oh, yeah. and the performance was absolutely electric. Electric, man it was yeah, fantastic man. and I, i'll never forget the horn sound was what blew me away you know you had the the chicago era remember the band chicago that had horns and then they brought it into this uh chicano music oh yeah and it, it was awesome and back in the 70s you had these bands that had like 15 members you know what mm -hmm. i mean and now some banda stages bro but back then, there was 5, 4, 10, 12 musicians. And I always thought to myself, man, how do they travel, dude? You know? Porque no había muchos voces y muchas cosas así para los... Probably in station wagons. Entonces eran station wagons. Sí, hablamos con Ra Rubén Garza anoche. Y dijo que hacían... Llevan hasta Calibas en una station wagon, carnal. Yeah. Como la de los Brady Bunch. No, eran vans. Eran yeah. station wagons. Yeah. 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 Oye, AJ, is he, are you the only... Well, you've got your brother, right? Mm -hmm. The backup singer yeah. or the singer, yeah, the vocalist? My brother, my brother's He's been with you since, you know, what? Since you started, Since day right? one, yeah, day brother. One. Yeah, yeah, man. How's he doing, man? He's doing good, brother. Qué bueno. Doing great, man. Sergio, my, my brother Sergio. My pops, Arturo, uh, Alex Pulido, Theo, and then I have um, John Everett on guitar, Josh Woods on bass, and my drummer, Daniel Sandoval Jr. Mm -hmm. So shout out to my band that's watching. Hopefully they're watching. Tenemos un que nos ayuda, que era de Harlingen, pero ahora vive en San Anto. Sí. Rogelio Montes. Rogelio, Rogelio Montes. Rogelio he Montes. Sound, he does sound. Orale. Mm -hmm. También Romo, Andrew Romo. Andrew sí. Romo también. My bus driver, Eric Delgado. Yeah. So I got, I got a lot of personnel, oh, you, brother. You, you, got sister, payroll, Belinda, bro. you got payroll, bro. You got payroll. my system from California. See, yeah, yeah, man, I got a lot of shit going on. Yeah, man. no, but you stay busy, man. Mm -hmm. Thanks and to then, God, and, 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 not, to God. and you don't just, uh, I know that you don't just delve into the music. You you, you delve into all of the kinds of Everything, things. Everything, brother. We'll talk Everything. about that in just a bit. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got AJ Castillo here from Austin, Texas. Hashtag PVT. Let's go to uh, Chaz and see if we got anybody on the chat zone who wants to say hi to AJ or wants to ask him a question. Yeah, I do. Actually, I want to be, give a big shout out to uh, Tejano Historian. He had a question and um, his real name is uh, David Robles. He goes, ask AJ, what does he think of David Lee Garza playing the accordion? What does he think about his gameplay? David Robles, uh, the Tejano Cowboy. Asking you, AJ. What do I think about his accordion playing? Yeah, yeah. What's, what do, what do you, what's your take on David Lee Garza and they, his style and his flair and all that? Listen, man. Um, David Lee Garza Los Musicales is my favorite band, Tejano band of all time. Mm -hmm. So growing up, 
you know, my, my dad introduced me to orchestra music, and we were listening to La Sombra, uh, Selena, all these different things. But when I heard David Garza Los Musicales, that, that kind of changed my path as well, too. David Garza Los Musicales is a big inspiration to me. And uh, I remember going to their dances, and, and that's the first time I really saw these beautiful Latina girls that were wearing these tight jeans. Right, And they're yeah. called the Rocky Mountain jeans at that time. Mm-hmm. And that shit just freaked me out. I was right. like 15 years old. And that's why I was like, God damn, I got to be a cowboy. I right. got to go buy some hat. I got to buy a hat. I got to buy some boots and jeans because I want to look like that. Jingles of testosterone. Yeah, yeah. man. I was like yeah. 15, 16 years old <laughs> trying to yeah, trying like to get it. in the clubs to see yeah. David Garza Son Musicales. But going back to your question about his playing, man, he's incredible. Uh, great player. And the thing about David Lee is he has his style. So when you hear his music on the radio or anybody's music, I can tell you that as soon as I hear the accordion, I know this is David Lee Garza. That's David Lee Garza. Or that's yeah. Frankie Caballero. Or that's Joel Guzman. Or that's Steve Jordan. And that's what's incredible about being a great musician. When you hear somebody play, I don't even have to know who it is. I know who it is. You got you get uh, the signature sound. The signature sound. You yeah. know who it is. You Rock, know. we got a, a super chat. Thank you, Robert Palacios. He wants to Thank give you. Me. Mr. Robert Palacios, shout out to Arturo and AJ. He said he's enjoying the show. And thank Hola. you guys thank you, brother. for being here. Houston, uh, Texas. Yeah, a couple of shout outs uh, in Lubbock, Manuel Gutierrez and Michigan, H. Atkinson and Conroe, Texas, Janie Rios and Dallas, Clem, ¿Qué pasó, Clem? and in Bastrop, Raul. Clem? Raul. Bastrop, Texas, cerquita de Austin. Yeah, and uh, if you have a question, hey, we're going to be here rallying myself, so let us know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, have, I have one thing to add really quick if I if I can. There Go was ahead, another Trudeau. super chat H, rally. No, no, no. H. Yeah. Atkinson's, uh, Atkinson, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. it says Saludos de Michigan, and AJ, he says that you are his son's Steve Jordan. Okay. So that's pretty incredible. Beautiful. I just Bro. wanted to make sure that I read that's that awesome. for you to uh, hear. Thank you. That's nice. That's awesome, dude. That's One nice. more super chat from David Ramirez. Thank you, David. He had sent it a while back. Yes. And he had a quick question for you, Rock. Hey, Rock, ever heard of Grupo Dallas with two Zs? Yeah. From back in the 80s. Yeah. He just was wanted Grupo to know Dallas. if you knew yeah. about that band. See, Grupo Dallas. Yeah. yeah. So thank you, David, for the super chat. Thank you. There was a lot of cool bands back then uh, in the 80s and 90s. Uh, locally here, también Promesa. I got into all that stuff, man. Blind justice. I, I'm really, you know, I'm really glad that I was able to live. You know, some people say I'm, I might be old. I'm 57, right? But I'm like, dude, I saw Iron Maiden on their first tour. You know, I saw Little Joe with a whole orchestra back yeah, in the day. Man. I got to see Romance, you know, a band called Romance yeah, back yeah, in the day. Man. Not many people got to do that, man, you know, and I got to be able. And then when I joined radio, when I started radio in 88, Todavía era real to real y car to la chingada. No había mm. nada digital, nada ese pedo. Mm. But I was able to learn all that and, and, and absorb all that all that pioneer shit. You know what I mean? Oh, it was fantastic. Let me do one more rock real quick. Sorry, sorry about that. Just uh, Graciela Perez from Gonzalez, Texas, wanted to ask you if you could work or do a duet with any female artist right now. Wow. Who would you like to work with that, you know, like, hey, you know what? This would be a nice collaboration. Hmm. Do they have to be Tejano? Or what is it, what uh, is it? I tell you what, do one Tejano and one. No, digas, no me digas Taylor Swift. I don't, I don't, I don't, Taylor Swift. <laughs> you don't like her or what? Yeah, no, she's all right. I don't, I don't know any of her songs. No, man, la veo en el pinche game de NFL con los Chiefs cada rato sale. Now, you know who my favorite, my favorite lady of all time is Beyonce. I love Beyonce, man. Wow. I thought each town, papa. And Tejano, and what about Tejano? Tejano, a female? There's a lot of girls there's a, there's out there. There's a lot right of now, girls, bro. man. There's a lot of Stephanie Montiel, Gabriela, the, Elida Reina, very, Jennifer very Peña. Talented, yeah. All of the girls, man. Yeah. yeah. Like Kesia Rima. Go, going back to those tight <laughs> jeans, right? Whoever has the going tightest back, jeans. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what AJ says. Yeah. Whoever looks the most vulgar. You know. Dude, it'd be crazy if you did an album with just uh, like five songs with five different girls. Yeah. That'd be badass. Yeah. That would be awesome. Yeah. That would be awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All, yeah, erotic, right. all erotic. I got the studio now, so we can do it all, man. Dude, and then they'll push you on their platforms, bro. There you go. That's all marketing, dude. That's what yeah. collaborations are. Mm-hmm. So, as a matter of fact, he's got a, a new collaboration with Juan P. Moreno, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. We'll play yeah, that yeah. in just a bit, but right now I got to let you all know about some events that are happening, ladies and gentlemen. Mm-hmm. This is a segment we're going to start. It's called Hashtag PVT Events because there's so many people that... Uh, are having events and they want us to be able to tell our audience and our fans. First off, this Sunday uh, at Cine El Rey, it's Cinemania Wrestling with Thunder Rosa. That's going to be a fantastic event. Sunday, February 4th, 4th 
Sin el Rey. I'll be the host. As a matter of fact, I got my, you know, my, I might have to go get a tuxedo. I don't know, but I'm going to be up there on the ringside and in the ring, and I'll be, uh, you know, in inviting everybody and saying hello to everybody. Master ceremony, Ceremonies, Rock and Roll James. And then Thunder Rosa, the girl that's on the poster, she will be here Sunday night. We're going to do a special Sunday night PVT live with her. And she's coming down from San Antonio. We'll be talking to her. Then on Saturday, February 10th, it's the Chile Relleno Comedy Tour happening in Freer, Texas, Crossroads Cafe and Cantina. It'll be yours truly, Rock and Roll James, uh, Raymond Horta, and Mario Superstar Salazar, the Chile Relleno Comedy Show, Crossroads Cafe and Cantina, <laughs> Freer, Texas, okay? And then... Yeah. Friday, February 16th, Ruben Garza y su conjunto. I will be the MC. Oh, yeah, I'm going to be busy, babe. God, we I mean, are going to be busy. Este, <laughs> I'll be the MC. It's going to be Casa de Amistad in Harlingen, Texas. Dance Hall Series. Tickets are $10. BYOB. Bring your own bottle. Your host and MC, Rock and Roll James, Casa de Amistad, Harlingen, Texas, Ruben Garza. And then on Saturday, March 15th or 16th, I'm 16th, sorry. 16th. March 16th, Chile Relleno Comedy Tour goes to Eagle Pass. Woo! Yeah. Shout out to Playland. Rick. Yeah, Rodi's Playland at Park. Uh, by by Kickapoo, have you ever played the Kickapoo Casino? No, over there? man, Eagle Pass. No, Dude, I haven't. Man, I haven't. we gotta get we, you out we there. We need to get to Eagle Pass. Yeah. Yeah, and well, if you do go, stop by Rody's Playland. We'll Rody's. be doing a comedy there, but you can go try out their fried chicken, their gizzards. Okay. It's amazing, dude. They have I the love best chicken. gizzards. They have the, the best, best gizzards. Rody's what Playland. Are, what are gizzards? Gizzards are the gizzards of the chicken. <laughs> right, the gizzards of the chicken. Look it up, baby. I think it's, I think the, it's, the, it's, it's, it's the part of... Es la verija de la... Es la verija. Es la verija del pollo. It's the chicken perineum. Oh, oh man. Okay, okay. Okay. Nah, okay. it's... Well, if I understand this correctly, it's the part above the stomach that grinds... Oh, yeah. no, it's like a grinder above the stomach. Uh, Bradley, would you back me up on that? Yeah. I'm, I'm we looking, have our fact yeah, checker. I'm going. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's what I... When I understand a gizzard. So you're eating all that shit, you don't even know what it is. Huh? AJ had to give us a gotcha question, right? I know. No, I, I, I know. Well, I've, looked, I've looked it up in the, in the past. I'm into chicken anatomy. Uh, yeah. okay. oh, oh, I'm just into choking my chicken. <laughs> easy. 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 Rally, any answers over there? I'm Giz looking. What is a gizzard? Not even Google knows. <laughs> right, it's, it's way too ethnic. It's that Google, what is, Siri, what is a gizzard? What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> if, if Ravishy and Rick Rody's still in the chat, uh, or anybody in the chat, let's see if they know it what it is. It is the gastric mill. The gastric it, mill. It is an organ found in the digestive tract of, of the animals. Like birds. You fry that shit up and put some barbecue sauce on it. It tastes good. Sauce <laughs> or deep fried. It's, it's, a, yeah, it's deep part fried. of the digestive organ. They, the, Yikes. I don't know, but it's delicious. Rody's has the best. <laughs> and, if, and then if you put their special sauce on it, forget about it. It's amazing. Also, uh, let's see here. Oh on Saturday, April 27th, we're going to head on over to Pearland, Texas, para el concierto inolvidable. This is going to be a fantastic event. And uh, there's going to be a lot of great artists. La Mafia will be performing as well. And uh, it's this one right here, Concierto Inolvidable. And uh, just a little musicales. We're just talking about David Lee Garza. Marcos Orozco will be there. He'll probably sing something with uh, Los Musicales since he's there. The Iconics, Mike and uh, Jimmy Sun, of course. And uh, they'll be playing there as well. Independence Park, Pearland, Texas. We have a quick spot about it. Check it out. Pearland, Texas, get ready for Concierto Inolvidable, Saturday, April 27th at Independence Park, featuring Grammy Award winner and internationally acclaimed La Mafia. Este es el momento para enamorar. La Mafia. Me estoy enamorando hoy de ti, pero perdidamente. Plus, el compadre DLG, David Ligaza y los musicales. Estoy muriendo por tus besos. Plus, Marcos Orozco. Cuida de tu vida en tu camino. Also, Mike Gonzalez and the Iconics, hosted by Bumper Gomez and DJ Double O. Get your VIP and standard tickets at mafiaqmp.eventbrite.com. For general and ticket information, please call 979-665-1923. Brought to you by Aranda's Franchises, False Distributors, and Quarter Moon Productions, where the stars meet the moon. All right. Jim Luna. I'm salito by Jim Luna. What's and up? What's up, Jim? 
Before we get to uh, to AJ and the new song they got, we also have another show happening Memorial Weekend, and this happens every Memorial Weekend, Victoria, Texas, Frank Salazar. He puts on a hell of an event. Wow. La Mafia, Duelo, Signo, Los Musicales, Jennifer Peña, Elida Reina, Jay Perez, Iconics, Lucky Joe, Tamin Masorre, and many more to come. Man, we got to get AJ in there too, man. We got to put you on that list so we can get you there Memorial Weekend. Dude. I'll be in Victoria March 1st on a Friday. I'm doing the pre-kickoff uh, dance to that show. Ah, see? Friday, March 1st, I'll be in Victoria, Texas at the Dome at the Community Center there in Victoria. Orale, March yeah, 1st, ladies and gentlemen. March 1st, so make plans to join us. All right. It's going to be AJ Castillo and Eric and Masore, two groups, one night. Se va a poner a con madre, bro. Sold and ladies, out, bro. tight out. jeans, right? Ladies, please put on those tight well, jeans. Well, now, now it's uh, it's not it's tight jeans. It's now it's leggings. Oh, oh, the leggings. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. it's transition to uh, yoga pants. There you yeah. go. The leggings. Se miran todas las curvas y todos los todo cottage cheese y la chingada. You don't need an imagination. Like, I got a good friend that said, Chingo the brisket. Yeah. <laughs> Get on the desk. Uvalde, Texas. Yeah. Little All brisket right. there. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, AJ Castillo, this is the latest right here. Con Juan P. Moreno, papa. You know what? Play a little clip of that video, babe. I want to see it. Let's see if we can get it on. We had a little trouble with it last night. So how was it <laughs> jamming with Juan P. Moreno, AJ? I was badass, man. Great experience. See? I brought him down from uh, Monterrey. So he came to my studio in San Marcos. Uh-huh. Hit him up. I was like, Juan P. My dad was the one. We, we were listening to music. He's like, man, you ought to call this dude. I know him, man. He, bring him in to do a song. I was like, no shit. Yeah, I got the perfect song. I was doing a conjunto tune this one. Yeah. And I was like, that'd be badass to have him on there. And I hit him up. Come on, AJ. You know, now that all this label stuff is out of the way, pretty much, everybody well, can play with everybody, right? No. No, not always. I mean, uh, c collaborating is always well good, isn't yeah. it? Nowadays, no, no, collaborating is great. Yeah, but sometimes when people are with labels or different people, you, you they won't let it happen. It, do you have you been running into any issues like that, or have you uh, no, just just with a few artists? Yeah, do you have a label? Is it do you, uh, I have an independent label called G Music? G mm -hmm. Music. Do you G sign Music. up? Do you sign bands up? Or? I signed. Uh, Recently, he's a Mike Gonzalez in the Iconics. Okay. So just signed Mike. G they were in, in your Iconics. studio, right? They were here. They've been recording a record this past uh, week. We were there for a few days and mm -hmm. knocking songs out. Man, we have some hits. Yeah. Some badass hits, like, um, yeah. like some Maz Chingon hits. What do you, you think know, about Iconics. Do you think it, it would have been better if Mike would have stayed with the name Maz? Or do you think it's better that he has Iconics now, bro? In my opinion... I tell him it's great that he has his own thing. Right. You know, because your dad is your dad. Yeah. Joe is Joe, but you're your own man, and you're mm. going to make a name. Yes. And he's going to make that name. He's going to make Iconics. He's the he's the leader of the band. He's the guy. He's building his he's own legacy. He's the one that has that sound, man. Yeah. So it's crazy because we, we talk about it. We're there recording in the studio. We're there for together for hours, mm -hmm. you know, so I'm there with Mike, the band, everybody, and we're talking. We just talk. And I tell him, man, you know, like, it's, it's different because when he was with his dad, he would go knock his parts out and he would bounce. He'd leave or whatever. And his dad, Jimmy, was there for days and days oh, working. Yeah. Uh -huh. So now Mike's there. Doing so it. now Mike's there all the time. So, yeah, you yeah. got to you gotta stick this shit out and be here yeah. through the whole process. Because now it's your name. Yeah. You know? So it's he, his legacy. Shit, he, he loves it, man. We we laid some songs this past week. And yeah. No, dude, when, when I saw that, I was real happy, man. I yeah. was like, man, awesome. Mm -hmm. you're, you know, Mike's out there with uh, with you, and and they're getting to record some of their own music. And I yeah. thought, perfect. 
And uh, there was, a, you know, when there was that big old, uh, you know, argument about, you know, who should have the Ma's name mm-hmm. and, and mm-hmm. Joe got it and yeah. uh, Jimmy's kid should have gotten it. And I, you know, uh, Bumper Gomez, he's another uh, uh, podcaster. Mm-hmm. I've had him here on the show. Yeah. He's from San Antonio. And we got into a little discussion and he was like that it should have been Mike. And I'm like, no, I'm really glad that he, they didn't get it because now Mike gets to build his own. Yeah. You know, because there's Before always going to be. be those people that that's not Maz. Where's Jimmy? Where's Joe? You know, they're always yeah, yeah, going to, yeah. though, that's always going to be a deterrent to your progress. Uh. But when you're iconics, it's el chavalo de Jimmy. Mira lo que está haciendo, vato. Entiende la onda? So, I mean, and, and if, if he wants the guidance with you, it's perfect, man, because you've been in the business for quite a while as well. Yeah, it's really. a solo artist, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Been doing this for a minute, man. And what, tell me a little bit of the, about the music that they're recording. Is it uh, Rancheras, Cumbias? Man, it's Rancheras, Cumbias. They got all kinds of shit, man. But we have a, a song we just did. And I say we because it's a collaboration, like you're saying. It's their album, but just as much as it's their album, I'm putting my heart and soul into it. My engineer, Anthony Perez, he's putting his heart and soul into it. So we have it sounding, I have it, but well, we're not going to play it. Damn. But, I mean, this shit is sounding really good, man. Me lo pones uh, after the show. Uh, I want to hear a little bit well, of it, bro. Well, these guys are recording songs with Beto Ramon. Okay, good so, songwriter. So, great songwriter. Legendary. Did some of the biggest hits with Maz. Mm-hmm. So, these guys, man, it's, it's sounding great, brother. I can't I can't tell you. Like, I, I, I'm getting goosebumps listening to it or hearing it at the studio because it re- reminds me of Maz. Yeah. Like, you know, the Maz when Jimmy and, and Joe were together. See. Si. Like it's it it's could be strong, you know what I mean. So and they've got it's up uh, to the guys. It's up to the guys how you know Isaac without he's doing the vocals on there. He's doing the vocals. Okay. We're still we're still waiting to lay the vocals, but the music's done. Everything's done. See, si. and we're gonna hit the vocals hopefully this week. Cool. So dude. we're excited about it, man. I'm it's, excited. It's gonna to be hear a killer, it. man. AJ, I'm, people it's gonna are, be the best shit they've ever done. The people are asking, did you happen to bring your accordion? Uh, man, I didn't. Man, they're, they're they're asking and uh, they look forward to. <laughs> we'll do it next time because this yeah, is yeah. the last time JB's yeah, coming to the show. Nah, you know? Yeah, hell yeah! Shout yeah. out to a, a super chat DJ Tiny. Saludos to AJ and Arturo from Salud, DJ Tiny. Tiny. DJ Tiny, AKA hey, Texas, the nasty yeah. boy from Beckles, Texas. Beckles, the nasty boy. <laughs> Thank you for the super boys, chat. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So man, so so when they sign with you, if a band signs, what, what is the deal like, or what is it? What is it? Do they get? Uh, it's getting a little bit personal, right? Well, yeah. I mean, is it, no, yeah. you, obviously you give them the sh- you, you get they get the studio. Yeah, you get studio and then studio they, time, the mixing, the recording, and all that. The whole thing, man. And yeah, because I've, I've been wondering about. It just depends. You know, everybody gets a different deal. You know, it just depends yeah. on where you're at, who you are, and what you're doing. Uh, you know, when I when I was starting out, man. Um, I had the opportunity to be signed by a few different labels, few different people, mm-hmm. and and I, again, me and my dad were there, and uh, we met with a few people in San Antonio, and and they were gonna give me this type of deal to where they were gonna sign me, mm-hmm. and then uh, I was already done with my album. I already recorded. It was ready to go. It was pressed. Everything. They just wanted to put their name on it, See. and I was gonna have to buy it from them. You know what I'm saying? So I had already done all the work, did everything. The shit sounded good. That's the only reason they wanted to sign me. So they were going to make all the money. I wasn't going to get anything. You know what I mean? You were going to get to I was going to have to buy my CDs back at six, seven dollars a CD yeah. and then try and sell my albums just to say I was with that company. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And you had no rights to your masters or anything like that, right? I mean, not that I know of. Yeah. But, you know, we were, we were so dumb. I was so dumb. I was there with my dad. We were happy as hell, man. Yeah. You know, we we're like, damn, we're signed. Some, somebody wants to sign me. I think they're going to do. But I already paid for everything. I already did everything. Everything was done, and they were going to sell me back my product mm-hmm. for this amount of money. And there was no guarantee of you're gonna. This is gonna hit. We're gonna get it on the radio. This is gonna be this. This and nah. It was just we're gonna make the CD and we're gonna sell it back to you. And then you could sell it for ten dollars or twelve dollars mm-hmm. or fifteen dollars. Yeah. But you know, going back to the, and I'm glad I never did it because I stayed independent. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I learned the ropes. Yeah. I I, I did some. I made a lot of mistakes along the way, but I learned from that stuff and, and was able to And you to weren't beholden to anybody. No, man. Just yourself and your talent and your creation. Just myself, brother, so I could do whatever the fuck I wanted. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I didn't have somebody telling me, you have to do this, you have to do that. And that was the reason why I made a lot of mistakes, too. That's the reason why I was recording smooth jazz and Zydeco and mm-hmm. Conjunto and Cumbias. I didn't know what A label what I, would have never let you do that. I didn't know what I was doing, yeah, man. No. I, just, I just wanted to make music. And I wanted people to, to know that I was good at my instrument. 
bro. From that's what I, I heard wanted, on bro. that show, that's all I wanted. From what I heard on that music, on, in the music, you knew what you were doing, bro. You yeah, were doing what you no, love no, to no, do. No, and no. You, as, but as far as music, I knew what I was doing. You but you didn't want to do that mainstream thing. You wanted to record what you what you love to do, and you that's know, true. That's true. But self satisfaction. You know? But then going back to the the tight jeans and the leggings and all that. <laughs> Uh, it always goes back to that. So, always. So this is crazy, dude. That's so, the common denominator. So when we first started, man, I remember, I always remember this one time I asked my daddy, because I always ask him, how is it out there? Uh -huh. Is there people out there or whatever? He's like, man, it's weird. There's a lot of guys. And I was like, oh. ah, what the hell? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, man, there's a lot of guys in front of the stage. And I was like, what the fuck? It was kind of crazy. But it was all because I had a lot of musician fans when I started. Like uh -huh. a lot of dudes that love the accordion or they love, yeah. you know, they were musicians. Yeah. Or they, they liked what I did. So then we started playing in different clubs. And like I was telling you, I was smart. I would start with a smooth jazz. We would do all kinds of weird shit. And the people would always look at us crazy. Like, what the fuck? But as soon as we did a ch 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 that's when you would see chicks. You would see girls. You would see women. And I would see the way they reacted to the music. And they would just go nuts, man. And then people would get fucked up. They would start taking shots. They would drink. And that's when I was like, this is the shit I need to do right here. This is the shit I need to do. Because this is what people love. When I play this music, people go crazy. You know, so I found my niche. I found yeah. my niche. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Ron, you know he wanted to turn in the, be the ethnic Caligula. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Spell that shit. Spell that <laughs> A mí me gusta el party, a mí me gusta el party. Dude, you were doing big in the Midwest area, también, verdad? It's awesome. awesome. Everywhere, bro. Some concerts and love. You Lubbock know the only place, the only place that I really don't come to is the Valley. I know, dude. That's crazy, bro. That's, but you know, I it's fucking crazy, man. I have a lot of fans that are from the Valley, right? Mm -hmm. And then, like people, when I was telling people, you know, I would do my my uh, Instagram stories or my Facebook story that I was going to be here in PBT. People were hitting me up like, hey, man, if you need a place to stay, come to my house. We'll fucking barbecue or you want to come before the show, hang out. I was showing my dad. I was like, man, it's crazy. But yeah, people, man, people from the Valley are cool as hell, you know? Yeah, man. So And they love watching the show, oh, man. Yeah, yeah, they, they love PBT and we're yes, getting sir. a very good response from everybody all over Texas, mm -hmm. the United States. We hooked up a phone. We First call was San Francisco. Second call was Florida, dude. It's mm -hmm. like, what? We're coast to coast here. There's several right. people there on the go. chat saying, when is he going to come and play in the RGB? So I know. There's yeah, a yeah, lot yeah, of yeah, people yeah. on the chat. I need to talk asking. to some of my friends who do to festivals. Get, yeah. You know, we need to get exactly, brother. Yeah. And it's, it's just a lot, a lot of times the fans don't understand, you know. Mm -hmm. um, we're, I'm a business. We're a business. I have 12 people. You know, and, and we're, we're already at all these other venues, at, at big venues, other places, and we're making money. So it's tough to come down here and, and you know, start over and come for $2,000, $2,500, you know, because my payroll is double that or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's and none of my guys want to come for free. Everybody's here to work. Oh, man. You know, Hell so no, it's yeah. just tough, man. And, yeah. you know, I want to come to the Valley. But, I, you know, again, it's not me. If it was up to me, I'd be in the Valley. Every few months, but you and people. I mean, you put on a hell of a show. It's oh, not yeah, just brother, stand there and play. Yeah, I mean, hombre, yeah, I mean, we, from what we saw at the beginning yeah, yeah, of the yeah. program. I mean, you guys oh, are. Yeah, you put on yeah. a show, dude. yeah, brother, for sure, man. Yeah, Bring, <laughs> got LED video walls, lights, uh -huh. my, you know, the whole thing, man. We we interact with the crowd, and it's, you know, we've just been blessed, man, to keep doing, you know, the the things that I've accomplished being independent, and it's thirteen years now. Thirteen, well, gonna be fourteen years. Uh, it's amazing, man. I can't believe it. I don't deserve any of it. And I and I ask God all the time, why? Like, why do people like me? Why do people like the shit that I do? And it just, I can't explain it, man. It, it, I'm blessed. Yeah. And uh, no, well, you're just, just a hard worker brother. too, bro. You yeah, don't, yeah. you don't sit down. I mean, you. No, not true. only do you do it's music, I'm a you, hustler, you started man. a production company. Yeah, brother. I mean, you still have yeah. those uh, systems going out to different areas in yeah, Texas, yeah, right? Brother, yeah. Tell yeah. me a little bit about that. When, when did you start? When did you buy your first setup, bro? Bro, I uh, shit. I don't know. I think when I when I first started, um, we would go play places, and there'd be it'd be dark as fuck. There was no lights, mm -hmm. so I was like, man, man what those burrito know? lights? Dad? Bro, it'd be like you know two <laughs> two park hand lights, and you know you want to put on a good show. Uh huh. And I would tell my dad, man, we need to buy some lights. So, bro, I was hustling at the time. I was a teacher. I was a teacher. I was working at a school, and I would I would make money as a teacher, and, and all the money I made, I would invest it into my career. I would I would 
invested in the recording. I would invest it into lights, whatever the fuck I could do until I was able to realize like, damn, I can make money at making music, at playing music. Mm-hmm. And when I started realizing I could make money doing this shit, that's when everything changed. Yeah. That's when you start hearing more cumbias. That's when you heard, that's when you started hearing my niche. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I play the accordion, bro. I want to play polkas. I want to play rancheras. I want to play that shit. But but my fans want to hear this shit. Uh-huh. So I, you know, I, I started changing toward like, you know what, man? I, I want to give the people what they want. The can you find a balance to where you know you can make both it, people it, happy? It just depends, and we, so that's what I do live. I try to do that live. But there's just some places too where they don't want rancheras. They don't want Pura cumbia. Uh, they don't want uh, conjunto. They don't want tejano. Like tejano, you play that shit in some places. That shit is not gonna work, bro. Mm-hmm. You gotta play some nasty shit. You gotta play <laughs> nasty cumbias. You gotta play guapangos. You gotta play whatever to get the people going, because that's what it's about. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But then there's other places where, like, I go to Houston. They want tejano. They want conjunto. They want ranchera. So we we switch. So we'll play rancheras, yeah. we'll play conjunto, we'll play tejano, and we'll still hit them with all my cumbias that are the hits, you yeah. know. And then that, then that freaks them out. So it's like, uh, it's just, it's tejano people are different in every region. Yeah, they're different, bro. It's crazy. You still ended up like your first album doing all kinds of well, stuff, right? Well, not really, not really. <laughs> all mode, well, except nah, the jazz stuff, nah. right? You should throw one of those jazz tunes all of a sudden, bro. It's, it's too much for them, man. <laughs> right? They'll be confused. Los shit. trastornas a todos, les pegan convulsions y le chingan. <laughs> I don't know what to do with somebody. Yeah, yeah dude. Yeah. Eso, yeah. Eso. Let's go to the yeah. chat zone, man. We got any more people out there that want to say uh, hi to AJ, man? I know that we've got a big crowd tonight. Shout out to Johnny Hernandez at Redwood, Texas. Ah, on Sally. Redwood. Yeah, San Redwood. Marcos. Yeah. That's where my recording studio is at yeah. Redwood. Ahí. Yeah. Puro Red- raza ahí. Raza in San Marcos. Araceli Sanchez is in uh, San Marcos. And then uh, Duran Danny, he's in Phoenix. ATL. And we do have a super chat as well. And Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, shout out to Sebastian Silva. He said, ask AJ if he remembers when he came to Midland. Do you remember going to Midland? Yeah, uh, bro, I remember going to Midland. <laughs> I'm going to be in Midland. When are we going to be in Midland? In June? We're going to be there for the Mex. Mex Tex Fest. Mex Mex Festival. Tex Fest. But, yeah, it's going to be June 8th. That's going to be a big ass show. What is it called again? The Mex Tex Fest. Is it? Okay. But there's one called the West Texas Blowout. Oh, yeah. That's That's our other good friends. That's another one? Yeah, that's going to be in July, but we won't be there. We've played that one a bunch of times. Okay. And then, uh, so the one you all are playing, what is it called? Mex Tex Fest. Mex Mex Tex. Mm -hmm. It's like Tex Mex backwards or what? Yes. Yes. Mex Tex Fest. Fat, well, that's hard to say. Mex yeah, Tex that's Fest. That's a tongue twister. Can you say it five times real fast? Mex Tex Fest. Mex Tex Fest. Fast, Mex faster, Tex faster, bro. Wow. <laughs> and it's going to be, uh, as that's a matter of fact, we San just Benito. finalized everything this past week on ah, that sí. one. Oh. Ya pasó el cheque, el depósito. Ay, 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 ay. It's going to be uh, Ruben Ramos is going to be there, ah, Gary Hobbs, and uh, I can't remember the other. There's like two more, but... AJ will be headlining that. So we'll be there and and it's going to be at the uh, Horseshoe Amphitheater. It's oh, a big amphitheater. That's beautiful. Well. Yeah, yeah, it's nice out there. Awesome, man. And there's what, another. There's also a place up in Midland called uh, Los Dos Amigos or oh, something. It's like uh, a bar or something I heard about it. You know what? I think that's people. in... Uh, I don't think that's... I Odessa? Think that's Odessa? Is it Odessa? It might be Odessa. But is it Midland, Odessa? Odessa. They're like together, aren't they? Uh, oh, well, I mean, it's they're close. It's like Far San Juan Alamo or what? Yeah. They, don't, they don't like each other, though. No, they don't? Hell no. I remember we did a boxing event in Midland, and we had to go to Odessa to go to the strip bar because <laughs> they, didn't oh, have yeah. any, they didn't have any strip bars Midland, in Midland. Midland's high class. Company. Yeah, uh, yeah. So we went to the low class. Uh, that's yeah. more our... That's our, what they call it. That's our style, Papa. Odessa. Odessa. You never heard of Odessa. 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 La Odessa que me metieron con ella en la casa. You know who, who uh, taught me about Odessa was Chingo Bling. Oh, Chingo yeah. Bling. Are you going to Odessa? There's a song here with you and Chingo Bling, right? Yeah, yeah. Right here, yeah. Oh, right here. Awesome. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. We back at it. AJ Castillo <laughs> and Chingo Bling. Chingo Bling. Now, we going to do right here. I need all the ladies to the That's when Tribal was hitting. Uh-huh. Hey, hey, Riley, come on, Riley. Yeah, I think I to yoga pants. Yeah. Rip them, baby. Corajo, no se te despega tu jefe. Vieja, I have to go with AJ. I have to. Tengo que ir a cuidar. Tengo que cuidar a mi hijo. There you go. Yeah, dude. Esta noche. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we want to thank our sponsor, um, Chorizo de H y H Papa. Asusta me one time. Local family brand in Mercedes, Texas. Same great taste you grew up with. Leaner, less fat than others. You know when you put the chorizo and it starts splattering all over the place, this one doesn't do it because it's super lean. And it's not just for breakfast. Nice kick, not too spicy. And the aroma it gives, you'll be floating from the bedroom to the kitchen like Scooby-Doo and Shaggy, Delicious. man. Delicious. This is something that's amazing. The breakfast, you do a little breakfast. There unas tortitas con papa, con chorizo. Y nombre, cállate la boca, shut up. O si quieres hacer un choriqueso también, puedes aprender el bote y pones la parrilla y pones un sartenito así como el nuestro amigo. Let's put that video, babe, de, primo de El Primo Cheo. Because I turned him on with chorizo de HH and he was blown away. Check it out. Miren nomás este rico manjar. Ay, no, déjame probarlo de volada. Le iba a dar uno de la cámara, pero... Mmm, 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 mmm. Hijo de su mañana. Qué sabrosura, raza. Mm -hmm. Oh, el chorizo hecho en ahí, raza. Es otro show, papá. Bien. Oh, my God, qué rico está. Ahora sí, como dice mi, mi gran amigo Rock and Roll. Asústame one time. Hey, Rock, me antojaste con el chorizo hecho en ahí. Tuve que ir a conseguir, raza. Qué cosa tan deliciosa, raza. Mm. Qué bárbaro, me dan ganas de ir al rancho. I know. Ah, sí, ¿Verdad? We gotta go visit Primo Chao. Do you all live in town or do you all have like a little ranch going or como, son del pueblo ustedes en Biura? Pues Biura, I'm from the city, oh, bro. It's casi puro city, yeah. Even Austin, we lived in Austin. I lived there like 30 years in my other house. Toda la raza de Austin, all, all, the, all the mexicanos, chicanos, tejanos from Austin, they got pushed out, dog. Sí. So they're like in, they're like in Biura, uh -huh. Kyle, sí. Round Rock, Pflugerville. No, yeah. I don't think too much raza lives in Austin anymore. No. No, hombre, gato. No más van a jalar allá en el construction y la llega, ¿no? Eh, I don't even know. Oye, el pinche. Jalar, I, don't know. I think everybody works from home, ya. Yeah. El pinche nah. tráfico, ¿no? El tráfico en Austin. No, el tráfico. Cabrón, gato. Yo cuando voy para allá, para Dallas o para Hueco, que voy con mi band o whatever, just to go see when I see, see Metallica. Yo siempre me voy por el toll road. road. No, you got to. Get the hell out yeah. of the house, man. I don't want to get caught in there, man. Yeah, oh, you and, get caught uh, up in it. Yeah, and then... Comienza el traffic jam para Austin. Comienza como en, en San Marcos, ¿no? San Marcos. En New Braunfels. Yeah. Comienza la línea de yeah. carros. Y, mm -hmm. y te lleva hasta el otro lado de Round Rock, ahí en Georgetown. Mm -hmm. Y luego empieza en Tempo otra vez, yendo para Construction, Waco, ¿no? Ya casi San Antonio y Austin ya casi están pegados, ¿verdad? Sí, ¿Verdad? Casi. Yeah. San Marcos es perfect spot right in the middle, man. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, you've got this uh, new song out. Are you re releasing an album or anything on Juan P. Moreno? You know what? No, man. Um, so, I built my new studio, right? So, okay. this is one of the first songs I recorded at the studio. This one, Te Recomiendo Sangreta okay. with Juan P. Uh -huh. And so, I just started recording Ching, a bunch of songs. Mm -hmm. um, just conjunto, different conjunto songs. Because I wanted to get the studio ready. I wanted to get the speakers, the rooms, tune, everything to sound badass. So, as soon as I get somebody in there, another artist... This shit sounds great. So now that the Iconics are in there, we it sounds incredible, man. Yeah. So um, I started recording a bunch of songs. So I'm always recording. So even even though I put out this song and, and one right after this one, I have a lot of songs just in the vault ready to go. But I'm going to release a cumbia here soon at the end of February. So are you looking for talent to sign? Uh, it just depends, man. Okay. Like I'm always looking for talent. I, I'd love to work with different people and I love to help people. Mm -hmm. You know, but it has to be, I can't help everybody. Yeah. You know, it has to be something that I really f believe in. Is there a, is know? there a return on, on an investment uh, as far as be, being a label, you know? I mean, because, um, I mean, it's not like it used tough, to brother. be where. It's not like it used to yeah, be. Yeah, you used to sell units, you know, uh, you used no. to sell CDs and it you make a little like cash off of that. Now it's all streaming. Yeah. And, you know, uh, we don't really know how much we make off the streaming. I mean, um, it's up, we're at the mercy of the tech giants, you know. Yeah, those guys, they always and everybody takes a cut by the time you get what you're deserved. Mm -hmm. Even in YouTube, you know, YouTube yeah, yeah, and all yeah. that, they all take a cut. All the uh, the, the yeah. super chats, all mm -hmm. that. Uh, so in streaming, you know, you have to go through um, like TuneCore, mm -hmm. upload the music with mm -hmm. the graphics, and then they put it on all the streaming platforms. 
it'd be nice if we were capable of doing it like that by ourselves, but we have to go through that certain yep. like tune core or mm -hmm. I think baby, uh, disc baby, CD or baby, CD baby and stuff like that. Distro kid. Do, do you use any of those or? Um, no, I go through a different, a different thing more, a little bit more. Um, how do I say? I don't want to say more professional because they're all professional, but it's just you have a little bit more control of uh, the pricing. You have a little bit more control of your pictures, when the releases, you know, because if you go through some of these companies, they don't always, you say you want to come out with a song in two weeks on Friday. If they don't want to, if they don't do it, you're fucked, you know? Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, so it's going to come out whenever they want to release it. Whenever they're ready to release it. Yeah, because when you upload mm -hmm. it for them to send it to all, yeah. you know, they give you a date, but it doesn't yeah. necessarily mean it's going to be on that yeah, exactly. date. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. And before you were able to do it like yeah. that. I, well, I mean, before you didn't, it wasn't streaming. You could put the album out. They were making albums and selling CDs and but, yeah. you know, people don't buy CDs anymore, you know. So yeah. it's just the return, it depends on the talent, you know. It's like sometimes if you have good music and people know the artist and people like it and people are going to listen to it, then there could be a return. Mm -hmm. But chances are right now, like I tell Mike and, and the Iconics, it's an investment because I'm investing a lot of my time. I'm investing my studio. I'm investing. I'm paying my engineer. Electricity. So, you know, all kinds of shit. You know, we're gonna, mm -hmm. I'm going to put out a video. We're going to pay for the pictures, the promo, mm -hmm. everything. So it's a big investment, and hopefully there's a return. But if not, I can live with the fact that I believe in these guys, yeah. and and we need to help our people. We need to help our raza. We need to help the Hanos. You so really like, can't have that mindset of having of expecting a return on investment. You, you can't, can, brother. Bro. Nah, man. But but my thing is, I want to put out badass music for the for the onda for the genre. Simone. Like I want to put top notch shit. I'm tired of hearing. A bunch of shit that, that was recorded in your bedroom or your whatever. And don't get me wrong. I've recorded a lot of songs in my bedroom or whatever, but I had badass gear or mm -hmm. I invested in I invested in stuff that I knew would sound good. It's not just the phone microphone recording you, you know, right? No, no, no. But but you know, that's what you mean. I but, mean, you do some one of the things shit. that uh, one of the things that really opened my eyes was when I came to record down here in the valley. I, I recorded with my compadre now, Chewy. I uh -huh. met Chewy Vivian. Yeah. He has a studio where you're recording. Alubel. Alubel Studios, man. It's a badass place. Yeah. And um, the way I, I met Chewy was through Babo. We were working on a cumbia together. Yep. And Babo's like, man, you got to come to the valley uh, and come spend a few days and we'll work. I was like, man, why the fuck am I going to go to the valley? I'm from Austin. Uh -huh. We can do studios over here. He's yeah, like, no, yeah. you got to come over here and, and vibe out and, is, and come check the studio out and come stay. And I was like, well, fuck it. You know, I'll go over there. So I came to the valley. I met Chewy. We went to the studio, and uh, I was amazed, man, with just the the vibe, the how how good of a person he was, how much it was comfortable, and and some of the best stuff that I've done because it wasn't like other studios. It wasn't like, hey, you got to pay, you're on the clock, and then uh, when by this time y'all got to leave or y'all can't uh, drink, you can't eat, you can't take break. It was just a cool thing, man. And yeah, and uh, and he has badass mics. Badass preamps. No, hombre, está bruto. My band's in there right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. So he has top-notch stuff. Chewy does. We're and recording some music as well with him, and he's just a great guy, man. Hell yeah. No, he's good people. But that's when I realized, and, and Babo was telling me, man, you got to use better mics. You got to use better amps. You got to use... And I, I always used to think, es el mono, es el mono. Fuck all that. You, you know, if, sí. you're, if you're badass, it's going to sound good. But the truth is, if you have badass... Imagine if you're badass, if you're talented, and then you have great gear... It's only going to take you to another level, you know, sonically, the sound. So, you know, I, I started, man, I want to do this. I want to have my own shit, you know, and then the pandemic happened. Mm -hmm. So the pandemic happened. We're in Austin. We used to rehearse at a place called a sound check. They closed it down, went out of business, never coming back. So we don't have a place to rehearse. I'm not going to take these guys, my band, these animals. They are not going to go to my house and rehearse <laughs> in my house, you know? So I was like, yeah. where the fuck are we going to go? So I found this property in San Marcos and I needed to park my bus and my truck because, you know, the pandemic happened. I, uh, I got kicked out of the parking spot that I was in while I was parking my bus and my truck. So they said, we need you to move your bus and truck. So I needed I can't park that shit in front of my house, mm -hmm. uh, an 18 wheeler and a tour bus. Mm -hmm. You know, so I found this spot. And man, thanks to God, San Marcos has just been incredible to me. Treat me great. I parked my bus and my truck at, at this location, this property I bought. And then I was like, man. We need a place to rehearse. We need a place to, you know, just to be like a home base for the band. Start building. So we started building a, a studio. Yeah. And it's, I mean, it was actually going to be just a rehearsal spot, just a spot to chill for the guys, to take a shower, to hang out. But then it just turned into a full-blown recording studio. 
Talk to me about publishing it, the publishing of music. Yeah, yeah dude, it, like, it, is that still is that still going on? I mean, is yeah. it worth? I mean, back in yeah. the day, a lot of labels would you know publish the music that was part of the deal when they would sign up. The publishing, band. they would say, okay, we'll we'll give you the the, the, the all the recording facility, everything you need, all mm -hmm. this. We'll pull out the CDs, all that. Uh, just uh, publishing rights over here and all this and that, and then so the rights uh, and. I spoke with like AB and uh, and and Pete Asturion. They mm. they jumped on it back in the '90s. They they started publishing their own stuff, and uh, they said that that really saved a lot of their music. How is that working nowadays? Is there I mean with this digital era? Because the publishing used to be for CD sales. It used to be for uh, you know um, what do you call it uh, radio airplay mm -hmm. and stuff like that. What's a, what's the deal with that? I I haven't heard anything on that. What do you mean you haven't heard anything on what? Like. Uh, is the publishing still a thing? Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, people want the publishing rights because you get fifty percent of a hundred. Mm -hmm. Out of a hundred, whatever a hundred is, a hundred pennies, a hundred dollars, you get fifty percent of that. Cool. So the artist that's making the music, that's singing, they get fifty, and the publishing gets fifty. Yeah. So you're getting half of whatever the pie is. But if you've got your own publishing company, you're getting a hundred, right? Well, it just depends on your record label. Who okay. you know. Who, well, like for you, that's independent, right? You've got your own pub. Mm -hmm, you would, mm -hmm. would you have your own publishing, right? I get a hundred. Do you get a hundred? Yeah. That's it's a way a, to go. Well, 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 it just depends on who wrote the song. También. So, who wrote the song? They might have their publishing company, or they might be signed to a different publishing company. Orale. So then, I have to decide: Do I want to record this song that this guy wrote, and then I'm going to have to give them fifty of my hundred. See, si. you for, know what I'm saying? For example, like uh, you, you record a cover. A cover song. You have to pay mechanical royalties. Royalties, right? Yeah, you got to gotta get a mechanical license. Yeah. So you got to get permission for somebody, and then they're going to take a percentage of what you record the cover. And how do they take that percentage? Do you just give them a check or something, or do you? Or do Hombre, they just take it from whoever the platform is that you put your song through. Okay, the monetization yeah. of the so views you gotta and all get, that. So let, let's say, like, if you're talking about a distro kit or CD baby, mm -hmm. you have to get a mechanical, uh, a mechanical license from them. Okay. Right, so then they have your song has a barcode. It has a digital, a digital print. Right, mm -hmm. so they know that every time your song is played, that that money that's from that digital print, they know where it's at. It's a wave. It's whatever it is. Yeah, you know, it's a number. Right, it's, crazy, it's a barcode. Bro. They take it out. That's yeah. what it is. Yeah, it's crazy, right? It's crazy, man. Yeah, the music industry is just changing so fast. It's it's, it's cutthroat. Man. Songs are two minutes long now, bro. Yeah, because people don't have long attention spans anymore. No, and because nobody they, wants to listen. When to they it. get on YouTube, they just want to see as much content or, or as TikTok, they can in that yeah, time. Whatever, whatever. TikTok, you know. That's what and happened it, to radio stations. There was a, a, a an article I read. They were talking with a singer from uh, from uh, what's the name of that? Uh, Buck Cherry, and they, he said that the label had told him like fifteen years ago, you have twenty seconds to capture the attention of a person with a song. Yeah. And now, just recently, they told him it's 10 seconds. Oh, my. So oh. it's like in, in the first 10 seconds of the song, you have to. I mean, it's true, man. That's it, what, it's crazy. That's what hits are, you know. Mm -hmm. That's why you. That's why when people say it's got to have a hook. What's the hook? You know, you got to hook the listener. Yeah. Because if not, they're going to scroll. And scroll. then you see that, uh, you know, like, um, like uh, it's the Chingle Bling mm -hmm. and. You got uh, the other rappers out of Houston, you know, mm -hmm. that are doing raps and they're getting all these millions of streams and the songs are like a minute and a half, two minutes. So yeah. the songs are just shortening and shortening and shortening, yeah. man. It's crazy. Be and then the, the cool thing, like I was telling Mike, too, when they're recording, he's like, man, we got to make it 3.45 before now, nah, man. As long as we're two two minutes, 30 seconds, 2.45, three, you know, the we want the people to hear enough that they like it. And it's so short that they want to hear it again. Yes. Mm -hmm. So they want to put it on repeat. And we want to listen to that song. Because I'm like that too, man. Like when I'm when I'm getting ready, I'm going to take a shower. I'm listening to my music on my phone in the restroom. I put that shit on repeat, the same song, over mm -hmm. and over and over I did and that over. with a song from uh, met that Mexican OT. Oh, Mexican OT. Yeah. The Mexican OT is killing it right now. Yeah. He's got a song where he's like on the graveside of his mom because she, she was murdered, right? And it was... To me, I had to put it on loop because I'm in the shower and it ends and I can't get out and part, push, push, play it, play it. Like and then they're it. making 0. 0.0003 per every time. So these are going to make about two or three cents off you. Simon, carnal. Orale. And, and, and I, told my, I told my my friends and my wife, 
by the time they hear my four minute song, they've heard that song four times, five times. Yeah, so you got to shorten your songs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Shorter. Yeah. Because people's attention spans are not the same the way they used to be. That's what we're doing in the studio right yeah, now. Bro. We have this six minute ZZ Top song. Oh, on. And we put it. <laughs> Nobody gonna, does that we're anymore. The, we're going to condense it down to like two and a half minutes. Yeah. Just the verse, hook, verse, hook, lead, and out. That's, you know? and that's it. I mean, less is more. Yeah. Nowadays. For sure. Crazy, bro. Yeah. Six <laughs> minutes to two minutes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, minutes. my God. Yeah, dude. It, it's a little, almost three minutes, but it's less than, it's, we cut it in half. Six yeah. minutes. And then there's some songs that, one of the songs we're doing, we can't cut it. I mean, it's just, it's a story song. You know oh, what yeah. I mean? But it's really, really good. And uh, I can't wait to get our stuff out, man. And uh, man, so what other bands are going through your through your studio right now besides Iconics? Man, I've, I've been blessed to have, we were talking about David Lee Garza has been in the studio. Orale. So, man, I want David Lee and the Musicales to come record their album there. That's like a dream of mine, you know what I mean? To have si. the Godfather come record yeah. in a, you know, the way it's sounding right now, it could sound great, man. I, si, I, man. Uh, I've had Juan P there. We have Mike Gonzalez the Iconics. We have a few other Corrido Tumbado artists. Mm-hmm. So like Mexicano, Mexicano artists. See, si. So that's, yeah, I have a guy named uh, Rasek Music. Just different people, man. It's, it's crazy. Is the Texas country scene still big over there in that area? Man, you know what? It's different. Like, you know, I don't know because I'm, I'm that's not my onda. Yeah. You know, I just hear. The Randy and, Rogers, and hear, Kevin see, Fowler. You know? I think that those guys were big at one time. And I think they're still, they're still hitting. But not the way they used to. Now you have the younger dudes that are like Cole Wetzel, Parker McCullum, yeah. people like that. I went to a, a show in uh, in Austin at the Moody Center, and it was I, got, I have a homeboy that that works with uh, with Cole Wetzel. So we go into the back, going through the buses, hanging out with Cole Wetzel. This dude walks on stage. It's crazy, man. Was it Dre? Andre? Yeah. It, no, no, no. That's not Dre. It's uh Yo Yo. Yo Yo. You know Yo Yo? I think so, yeah. yeah I know Dre. No, nah, it was it was Yo Yo. Yeah, Dre's Dre, Dre was his drummer and now he's managing him. The road manager. Oh, uh, you know what I think you're right. Andre. Uh, Yo Yo is uh like Yo-Yo's sound like the, Yo-Yo's like the um Monitor song guys. Well, he he does monitors and he's yeah. like the. He's from Abilene. Yeah, he's from Abilene. Plus, Dre is uh he, he was a drummer. I know who you're talking about. He's a manager. Yeah, he's a road manager. Yeah, he's now. a manager. Yeah, because yeah. we got to hang out with him at yeah. uh, where was it? Maybe in uh. Uh, Hello. Yeah, we're Lodis, backstage yeah. and it was crazy. The people were crazy dude. for Cole Wetzel, dude. dude it was you know, crazy. You know what was crazy is we did a show years ago and I told Cole Wetzel, I was like, hey, man, remember when you opened up for me? He fucking started laughing. <laughs> but before we did the gig, they told us, they, like the promoter, and they said, yeah. hey, man, whatever y'all do, start covering y'all shit up. Cover your drums, cover your bass, cover your accordions, all oh cover my. all the shit. Because these fucking dudes, they throw beer. <laughs> They start throwing oh beer. They God. throw instruments. They throw all wow. kinds yep. of shit, what? and the crowd throws it back at them. Oh Dude, my I've God! I've never seen Gawachos act like this. This Them is crazy. Pan- Pantera, bro. I see it up. Pantera. Man, but it's like country, uh-huh. country people. But you're rough, bro. And, and, and rowdies we, like the Bruce Brothers, bro. You, this is crazy shit. We've never seen anything like this. This was years ago, and he goes up there on stage, and he goes, "I can say whatever. I can." I can. I'm, I've been cussing the whole time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You can say whatever. So say this, it. this fucking dude, this guy, watch goes on stage. It's cool. He goes on stage. He goes, this next song, this next song goes out. It's about that time where my, my, my girlfriend, she fucked my brother, oh. and he just the crowd went crazy, uh-huh. and he goes into the song, and I was like, what the fuck? Like this, uh-huh. we the Hanos. We could never go on stage and say some shit like that, bro. <laughs> we would never be welcome back in that town. See. Man. Yeah. Yeah, they go it's crazy. Just, it's just crazy. It was it's, crazy. It's man. incredible seeing Cole Wetzel like, wild, just, wild. Wild. just grow to what he is today. Mm-hmm. Nuts. Uh, it's nuts. I found out about him through my daughter and uh, really? when it, for his first album. And he says, she said, I think this guy's going to be big, Dad. And I'm like, really? Okay. I heard it. And I was like, oh, it's okay. I like it. Uh. And then it just like got better and better. And then he uh. signed with Columbia. And now he's doing amazing. Arenas. Dude. Yeah, bro. Arenas. Yeah. It's crazy. Went from little clubs. Making thousand dollars to now making two fifty, two hundred fifty thousand a night, yeah. two hundred thousand a night. Yeah, dude, Ain't I'll that take nice? it. No, I'll take it. And the nice humble guy, bro. I mean, He's a cool dude, dude man. So like, yeah, bro. When yeah, we were yeah, backstage yeah. with him. I, he was giving my daughter took a shot out of his bottle of whiskey, and <laughs> we were taking pictures. I mean, we we have a video, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, search hashtag PVT hashtag Cole Wetzel. And uh, you'll be able to check out all the behind the scenes we had with him. And then we also have one with uh, 
uh, Charlie Crockett, bro. Have you ever heard of Charlie Crockett? I heard of Charlie Crockett. I think he's Charlie Crockett's from, from Austin. Yeah, I think he's from Austin. Yeah. Well, he was originally from San Benito. Oh, okay. And then his mom took him to Dallas, and he was being a rascal, so she she sent him to New Orleans and with his uncle, and he started learning all the street players. Mm-hmm. And he started hanging out with him, and then he just picked up the guitar and he started playing on yeah. the streets all over the world, man. And he ended up uh, 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 playing at the subways in New York, and they found him and they recorded him. And the guy's like, he's doing it's it's Americana music, yeah, yeah. And he's just like, you know, he's doing mm-hmm. songs that nobody else does, man. Weird ass shit, old western so stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah. old western yeah. stuff. He has a song on the new. Uh, there's a, um, what's the name of the guy who directed Goodfellas? Martin Scorsese, right? Uh-huh. Scorsese. He has a uh, the Flower Moon. Movie. Yeah, there's a movie about Oklahoma and the Cowboys. Charlie Crockett, he's on that soundtrack. Really? Yeah, with Martin Scorsese. So, yeah. Yeah. That's quite yeah. So this this song is the latest you've released with Juan P. Moreno. Yes. And is there any more music coming out? Yeah, there's a bunch of new music coming out, man. I was telling you, I've been recording okay a bunch of stuff at the studio, so I have a new song that's going to come out at the end of February. Okay. So new cumbia. Orale. So that's like. It's it's crazy, man. Because like I exactly like we're talking about. I I do all kinds of music, mm-hmm. so I have people when I release conjunto songs, my my diehard fans they're just freaked out. Like they don't, they don't understand that I'm coming out with well, why we want to hear cumbias or I freaked hear, out too, dude. Yeah, I freaked and out with like, your playing. It was amazing. It's like, bro, I, I do this is what I do, but I you know my cumbias is what is how I make a living. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I love conjunto, I love tejano, I love all that stuff. But like I told you. Things start changing when you have people that that work for you and you you got mouths to feed and and people depend on you. So, you know, I had to make a decision a long time ago. Did I want to be Steve Jordan or do I want to be AJ Castillo? You know what I mean? Yeah. And and make a living. And I've been blessed, man. Thanks to God. Yeah. Like how we can make a living off of doing this is. And you got your side hustles, too. bro. I never would have thought that. Well, well, the, the side hustles came from the music. Yeah. From making a living from doing music. Growth. So I never would have thought when I started that I would be doing this for a living. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like I was a teacher. I was a teacher. I was teaching uh, pre-K kids. No one believes me that I did that. And I was being a kindergarten cop. I was was crazy, man. (laughs) I was was going to work. When I would get out of work, I would go to the gym. I would get out of the gym. I would go to the studio. I would work till 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning, get home. Go to sleep for two hours, wake up, and go to work the next day. And then the teachers weren't even wearing yoga pants or tight jeans, man. <laughs> no, you know, man. So yeah. forget it. Uh, no, I'm not allowed I'm to. out of here, bro. There was, there was a few. No, let me tell you, a school is a good place to work for a guy. Yeah, because it's all women. Oh, really, <laughs> bro? Babe, you're quitting tomorrow. <laughs> okay, you're you're quitting That's tomorrow. Why I'm, I'm like, oh my god, you're gonna. I'll say pay true. for your new car. It's, it's just facts. <laughs> Facts, nobody. <laughs> the probabilities are good. Hey, not there. Is there a guy like AJ yeah, working at your school, babe? I'm going to tell you right now. You're going to yeah, stop, yeah. stop working there. I cannot disclose that information. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, but he's younger and more attractive. <laughs> hey. So watch out, Rock. <laughs> Does he have money? <laughs> all right. Yeah. No, but, but when you're younger and you're more attractive, you, you don't necessarily need money all the time. That's true. It helps. <laughs> it helps. Gracias, Arturo. Gracias por hacerme la esquina ahí. Hey, <laughs> Rock, we have a super chat. Let's do it. Let's what, do what it. Is, to, what does a super uh, chat mean? It just means that they they, they contributed. A few bucks. Yeah, they contributed. Oh, wow, wow, some, wow. Yeah, yeah. That's badass. Uh, I, thank need, you, I need some super chat, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Vanessa Sanchez. <laughs> Saludos to AJ. Saludos. And Rocker Old James from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Dude, they have a big music festival. And hopefully I'm going to be at that yeah. this year. We're working on it. Ojalá, carnal. So, so yeah, let's yeah. talk to them this week. They want to ask you, hopefully you can make it to Milwaukee this summer. Milwaukee. Any plans about on Milwaukee? I hope, I hope so. I love Milwaukee. So okay. we played the, the Mexican festival I think it's been like 12 years ago, 10 years ago, something like that. Yeah, it's like been a long 14, it's been a long time. I think it was in 14. 2014. It's been yeah. a long time when we first started. And it was beautiful, man. I, I was, you know, it's it's weird to go all the way up there yeah. near Canada and see as much raza as you do. Yeah, it's weird, like right? Yeah. It's yeah. weird, dude. Also, this but question. It's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. This place. question is from Carlos Rodriguez. Hey. Gana Carlos. Niners or Kansas City? Uh-oh. Man. Here you go. Let's do it. I want to go with the 40 winers. <laughs> oh. Dude, what happened to the freaking Lions, dude? Bro, did they it's miss Dan, up Dan Campbell? I wanted Dan him to Campbell's win. Dan Campbell's an idiot. Fourth and <laughs> ten, or what it was? How the fuck are you gonna go for it? 
You got to kick a field goal, bro. This is not week six, week eight, week nine, week one. This is you're you gonna need, go. You're gonna go to the Super Bowl. You need every point. put all that shit aside and kick a field goal. But and if at it, least if the guy misses, it's not on you. But if it would have made it, they would have been tied. But he overtime. No, overtime. But if he would have made the fourth and ten, I mean, we would have said. But, but that's, that's a. You know what I mean? All, that's all. It's. <laughs> I know you're, you're saying we, he would have been a big hero. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nah, if he would have made it, you know. I mean, it, nah, so, he still he, would have been stupid to me. But still, man, when you're that close to the Super Bowl, man, you don't. You do can't fuck like it up. You, you cannot, bro. Up, bro. And yeah. that's why he was crying at the end. That's why he was sad because he knows that. So we told? He knows he fucked up. Who's your team, bro? Bro, I man. Come on, Come on man. I'm this tired of the question. Cowboys. No, you're tired I'm, of the Cowboys? I'm tired of the Cowboys, man. Did I'm they, tired of this shit. Did they shit. break your heart, man, this they past? Break, they break my heart every year. But this one was the worst, wasn't it? This one it? was the worst because now everybody knows it's Jerry Jones. And the Cowboys are never going to win again as long as Jerry but, Jones is alive. But why Jerry Jones? Is it, is it's, it Jerry it's, Jones' you know, fault it's, that Dak threw those two it's, interceptions? It's Jerry and it's, and it's Steven. But it, you know it's what it is? It's the culture, you know, right? You know what? I, I blame the fans, too, man. Because nobody talks shit to Jerry, nobody puts them in the hot seat. Nobody tells him anything. You you can't even get close to that guy. But like I've I've been like I go to the Raiders games. I love to go to Las Vegas, mm -hmm. so I've been to a few Raiders games. I've been to the Pro Bowl, and you see the fans and they talk shit to that guy, the owner. Uh, what is his name? Al Davis or his son, son the, son, the son, Mark Davis. Yeah. So the the fans in the the Raiders have a lot of fans that are raza that are Mexicanos, oh, yeah. Chicanos, Tejanos, and the man. And they'll say crazy shit like, fuck you, Mark. Like, Fire them. that coach. And then, you know, after a while, he he starts saying, I hear you, I hear you. Fire the coach, bro. And Jerry Jones is a micromanager, right? He, 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 he started just letting... Just, bro. Yeah. Los empapacha. Como, yeah. Baby, como si son but, niños. But, but the fans don't give these guys a hard time. Like, if you go to Philadelphia, you go to uh, uh, Oakland, they talk shit to the to the players they talk shit to the owners they they get pissed off cowboys fans no but I'm, I'm a cowboys fan for life it's okay we'll be all right nobody i don't want the 49ers to win dude why not because they'll have one ring more than the cowboys uh, oh, gee. <laughs> we can't i wanted that's why i wanted I detroit to win dude i, I want detroit yeah. to win i don't really but you but you said you didn't like taylor swift and the and the chiefs well, so i don't like the chiefs and i don't like the taylor swift either uh, but I'm, you know what <laughs> i'm gonna be there the for the chiefs are entertaining show. to watch i like watching Mahomes. i mean he's a fun guy Man, to watch I, I thought it was gonna be uh baltimore I thought it was going to be Baltimore and <laughs> San Francisco. Did you see that meme that they put? It's like the 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 quarterback from Baltimore. What's his Lamar, name? Lamar, 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 Lamar. And it's his picture, and then it fades a little bit, and it's still it's him, Dak. and it fades, and it ends up being it's Dak. Dak. <laughs> that was like uh, that's cold blooded, bro. <laughs> but listen, listen. <laughs> I we, didn't see that. Man. We did a gig in uh, somewhere in East Texas, uh -huh. and I took my band. We went to a casino. We went to the casino in, in Lake Charles at uh, the Golden Nugget Golden in Lake Charles. Nugget. Golden Nugget. Uh -huh. And we're there. And I'm playing blackjack. You know who I'm playing blackjack next to? Who? Dak Prescott. See? It's the preseason. What the fuck are you doing gambling right now? You should be studying working. film. You should be working. You he's, should be working. You got to do something with all those millions. Uh, Bro. He, he went to his grandma's funeral. Oh, that's right. My bad. I forgot. He went to his grandma's that's funeral. That's what it is. Oh, yeah. And his grandma's funeral was at the blackjack table? I think it was. He was on the way home. It was on the way. No, no, no. It wasn't her funeral. It was her 80th birthday. Is it her birthday? It was her 80th birthday. He was there playing blackjack. Did Damn, he uh, did he let you take a picture with him or no? Nah, man, I wasn't gonna. I'm not gonna do that. No, hombre, ato. Ni con el phone okay. down, selfie. Hombre, ato. No. But my band was there. They, my band was all around there. They couldn't believe. Yeah. They're like, man, his brother was there with him. He, too. He's skinny as yeah. He is thinner in in, yeah. in person. Mm -hmm. And and the chick that he, nah, I'm not gonna. I'm not say, gonna say it. Say it. Say it. Well, she say she it, wasn't it, even attractive. Una gringa. No, 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 no. Una gringa. It, it wasn't the one that he's with now. Oh. Oh. Oh, you recorded that. Bum, bum, it. Bum, 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 bum. There you go. Uh, <laughs> hey, man. Uh, man, I just got to. That gotta, was his cousin. Was, was she wearing tight the, yoga pants? I got to hate her. Yeah. Uh, I shouldn't have said nothing. I'm going to regret that one. Yeah. That was his cousin. Eh? Well, maybe uh, they're relatives. Hey, right? la, la, hey, Arturo, la prima se le arrima. Yeah, yeah. La prima se le Oh my God, man! Hey, anybody on the chat zone, man? They're probably talking shit about the Cowboys too, yeah, man. I yeah, see. everyone's uh, talking NFL. Shout out to Tommy Solis and Puro Longhorns, Puro Longhorns, and, uh, Gilbert uh, Calvo and Don Cheto and Mario Galvan and 
Carlos from Cahoma, Texas. Check a homa. Check a homa. Orale. And uh, we have over four. Now we're at 500 viewers. Orale. Got a big audience there. And that's Hopefully. a good, and that's a testament to good. you, sir. That's, that's pretty good. good. Yeah. Shout out real quick to We're Edgar trying. Samaripa from Zacatecas, México. Oh, yeah. Saludos para Zacatecas. Oye, ¿no has, hecho, no has ido para México tú, bro? Todavía no. Chinga, Monterrey, va to dirigir your shit up, man. Ah, big no, bro. time, bro. Yeah. Yep, they will. ¿Qué pasó, Arturo? Pues ahí nomás. Quiero ir a Monterrey no. y también Puebla, México. ¿Qué pasó, Arturo? Pues Arturo Mante, San Nicolás. Tenemos que negociar primero. ¿Eh? Tenemos que negociar primero. Pues sí, ahí, bien, tenle una... Un, Estamos, tú nomás viéntale el tamaño de pesos que quieres, carnal. Ya, no, ya, ya estamos Juan, en eso, ya, estamos, ya sí. estamos hablando con Juan y a ver qué podemos hacer con Bro, eso. Bro, I bet if you would pack that uh, rodeo yeah. far west or whatever. I mean, we whatever. just gotta we just gotta play one or two times uh -huh. and let the people see the show. Sí. And then, you know, it'll do its thing, brother. I've been blessed, man. That's one thing that that I'm that I've always been proud of is that uh I've never paid anybody to play my music. I've never had a management team. I've never did anything like that man everything i've ever done has always been like grassroots organic it's organic so if so the fans really do it's crazy man mm -hmm. like people really do like this shit that's sí. why it's taken off i've never paid anybody i've never had a management team i've never had a record label i've never had any of that it's just been all independent but not for nigi pero tienes un talento tremendo carnal thank you brother but it, but honestly i think it's more than that man I, like uh i believe it's god man you know like i, I believe I'm, I'm a, i believe in god and uh but work ethic has a lot to do with it too no, bro no, but yeah it does you it know does. don't get me wrong all that god all gives you the true, talent brother. it's no, up to you listen, to do something with listen, it bro that, that's all true but there's a lot of people that are talented that are incredible singers that are incredible entertainers and and they never get to i don't want to say the place i'm at but never get anywhere to where they're where they're happy, where they're where they feel like they're successful. Probably because you know they what I mean? rely on other people to get yeah. there. Sometimes you sure. don't, but bro. Sometimes you do it yourself. Sometimes, but I also think it's God. Like everybody has their their special thing, right? And and nobody can take away what's for you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So and so on top of all that, like being blessed, right? Which which God anoints you. You're the one. Also, you have to work at it. You yeah. have to continue to work, and you have to have that drive. And I, and I have a drive like my dad. We have drive like crazy, man. Like, like I'm a doctor, like no matter, <laughs> Mr. T. Uh, <laughs> Dr. T. Dr. T. <laughs> Dr. T. <laughs> Dr. T. <laughs> Dr. T. <laughs> blues. We got a lot of drive, baby. Hey. So uh, that's one of the things, man. Like I've always been, even from the beginning, man. I got chingles and nose, chingles and nose. People would talk shit. People who who does? But I knew when I came out. I was saying my names in songs. I was aggressive. I was, you know, the way I looked was different than all the other Tejano people. People would say, well, how come you don't wear a hat? Or how come you don't wear boots? Or how come how come you don't look like this? Or how come you don't talk like that? And and I just knew I needed to do something that got people's attention to where people would say, who the fuck is that? Yeah. Who the fuck does that guy think he is? Yeah. And that's how I needed to come on the scene because I wanted to come on the scene like this. Yeah. And I wanted to start working already. I wanted to be there with everybody else. And I knew if I was going to be timid, it would have never worked. So I knew I needed to let them hang out. Y vámonos. This is who I am. This is what I'm doing. This is what it is. And that's what it was. You that's know? AJ Castillo, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, want to thank Top Floor Ooh. Cars Classic Car Dealership, Brenham, Texas. We're just talking about Brenham. New, bigger location. Uh, it's located 301 South Market Street in Brenham. If you're looking for a specific vehicle or want to buy or sell or trade, contact Tony or Carlos at 979-337-1006. Check out these uh, beautiful 62 Nova. Mira nomás el carrito ese, Arturo. Está bruto. 62 Nova y los rines que tiene y las llantitas. Nombre está enterito el carro. That's a 62 Impala. También un carrito bonito, man. Beautiful. And that's in Brenham. Brenham, Texas, man. Brenham, you got to go check them oh, yeah. out. They've got so many vehicles there. These are, I, I've sold already. They go so fast. Wow. But if you've got a classic car that you want to sell, you can put it on their lot. They do consignments. But, man, all their cars that they have, they're, you know, tan enteritos, limpiecitos. I mean, in great running condition. Uh, and some of them have been modified a little bit with, uh, you know, engine and uh and air conditioning and all that kind of stuff there's another video we have there with a truck this classic truck put it on but let's check it out so adrian can check out the car or the truck in the parking lot let's see if it pops up here this one man 
Is that truquita? The trucks, the trucks are so popular right wow. now. Yeah, troqueando, puro yeah, troqueando. Yeah, yeah. troqueando, and uh, so vroom, they've got those vroom, as well. Vroom, vroom, vroom. El, el, look at those 55s. Nombre, it's just an amazing Super place. Nice. I like to just hang out there. And that Jeep that's coming in, that blue one, man, that's an awesome Jeep too, bro. Leave that. I'm telling you, ladies and I'm gentlemen, and yeah. Brenham is such a nostalgic little town just to go out there and check out the shops and stuff. If you do cruise by there, stop by and say hi to Tony and Carlos. You can follow them on Facebook, Top 4 Cars, Instagram, Top 4 Cars, Brenham, YouTube, Top 4 Cars, and Top4Cars.com. Check out all their inventory, and they will deliver your classic car to your home if you need it. But uh, thank you so much, Tony and Carlos, uh, one of our uh, biggest supporters of hashtag PVT. Yeah. So, uh, any last uh, comments there on uh, the chat zone, Chaz? Delma, Delma Munoz wants to give a big shout out to her family, and she's watching hashtag PVT, and she's enjoying the show, and she wants to thank the both of you, thank Arturo you and AJ. Thank you for coming on the thank show you. tonight. Uh, thank you, thank you, to Rock she, and you guys, Chaz, and Brianna yeah. for having us. Thank no, you. No, no, thank fun you, here, man. Hey, and follow them on uh, social media, ladies and gentlemen. Sígame. If you're watching from the Valley, wherever you're from, follow me on Instagram, uh, AJ Castillo. Uh, it's AJ Castillo without a zero, but it's without an O, it's a zero. Hit me up on Facebook. I need a lot more friends from the Valley area so I can come back here to the Valley and perform. I would love to come back, do some festivals here. I have. It's been years. Uh, the last time I was here was at a border fest in Hidalgo. Oh, yeah. That's a big festival. That was a badass show we did. Yeah. And it's been years since then, so hopefully we can How come long ago was that, AJ? Uh... Like seven years ago? Seven years? A little bit longer. I yeah. think we, we opened up for La Mafia at that yeah. time, right? Yeah. It's been it's been a minute. Well, you know, there's people that watch the show, and there's also people that work with us, committees, mm -hmm. and, yeah. you know, because we got, I mean, you saw the events. Mm -hmm. We've got all kinds of shows, coming, of up. shows coming up. Right. So they contact us wanting to promote their events. And, uh, you know, so if you know anybody that's involved in committees that are building this festival, bring, bring in AJ Castillo, mm -hmm. man, and they'll, you won't be, uh, I mean, I'm telling you, you won't be... Um, you're going to be satisfied 110%. Let's just say that. Go. Because this guy puts it all on stage. Can I, can I plug some of my shows coming up? Yeah, go ahead. I'm, we're going to be in Cotula, Texas. What at the they? convention center, Cotula, Texas. When uh, February the 10th. February 10th, Valentine. What do you say? Valentine's? That's how they say it in the 956. With, with a B. With, with, with an M. With a Valentine. With a B. Valentine's? Oh, it's a B and an M. Yeah. Okay, Valentine's. Valentine's. Ahí en Cotula, Texas. Cerquita de Taco Palenca. Ahí en Cotula. And then uh, the 24th, we're going to be in Alice, Texas. Uh, VFW. VFW in Alice, Texas. Un gran Yoso Baile ahí in Alice, Texas. And then uh, March 1st, we're going to be in Victoria, Texas for the big kickoff dance at the, the Dome, the Victoria Center. And then March 2nd, we're going to be in San Antonio, Far West. Uh, March 16th, Uvalde, Texas, a big festival out there. And go to AJCastillo.com. we got all the dates coming up. It's going to be great, 2020. Yeah, 24. it's going to be awesome, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> Cinemax coming back. Bro. Yeah. This song is called Grown and Sexy. Yeah, Grown and Sexy. Damn. <laughs> uh -huh. Nice. It's one of the best songs I've done. We'll put this rollita in loop. La ultima, la, cuando vea para Dr. TZ regresa a la casa. Oh, come on. Babe. Oh, my God. Boom. Take my phone, put it on a nightstand, baby. Pon on loop. Orale. Oh, no, Rezo. There you go. That's a good one. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, AJ Castillo. Yeah. There you go. Right here with us, man. Woo! Bro, I'm really glad you came, man. Hell I, yeah, man. I, I mean, I've been wanting to get you on the show. And it, yeah, brother. And I booked you back in November or something like that, right? It was a while Hell back. Yeah. And, you know, because we're booked until, until like June. Some people call us and... And I said, man, I gotta, I gotta put in, uh, I gotta get a hold of AJ, get him on the show before I get any more people because I wanted you to come in and appreciate it, brother. And uh, you were one of the first interviews I did pre-recorded. That's um, right. That, yeah. uh, that, that, that Chewy so Studio. So you gotta go back and check that one out too. That was in, yeah. uh, that was at Alubel Studios. Yeah, and we talk about the the the, the high school sports. I know you asked me questions. I was like, I love. Mario, how does this guy know this stuff about yeah, me? Yeah, about Tra yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Lake Travis yeah, and Crockett, uh, Crockett and, West Crockett Lake, and yeah. Westlake. All those mm. big big teams over there. High school. I love high school football, yeah. man. Especially the championship games, man. I like to go yeah. check out those yep. talent. It's like NFL talent, bro. I yeah. mean, the Con way they were catching the ball. Converse, Converse, that's that's Converse, Converse Judson, yeah. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let me tell you. Sunday, I'm going to be at the Cine El Rey. And uh, it's going to be Cinemania. Put that poster again, babe. And the girl right there, right at the middle with her tongue out. Oh, on, she will be here inside the studios 
that evening after the show. We're going to have a Cinemania after party with Thunder Rosa right here. A special Sunday night hashtag PVT. And we'll be sure to put some of this music when she comes in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then on Monday, we're starting to do Candidate Mondays because I started uh, getting uh, calls from candidates that are running for positions in uh, the Rio Grande Valley, South Texas, and the state of Texas. And uh, this Monday, Hidalgo County Sheriff Candidate Frank Guerrero will be here. We'll be uh, getting to know him. I, I don't know him personally. I will know him by the end of that show. And we'll know where he comes from and, and, uh, and his history and all that good stuff. And then next Wednesday, we have Orfi Marichalar. She is La Mera Mera. And she's a model, uh, Instagram influencer, and a singer. I remember her when she was uh, starting her singing career about 15 years ago, I think. And uh, her dad is uh, Mario Marichalar, who was singing with Ramon oh, yeah, Ayala for yeah, many, yeah. many that's, years. That's his daughter. Wow. That's his daughter. That so she's going to be here with us next Wednesday night. And uh, you all just have a beautiful evening, ladies and gentlemen, and we appreciate uh, everybody that supports the program. And uh, we want you to like, share, and subscribe. You don't understand how much that thumbs up helps us and the subscribing as well. We're almost at 30,000 subscribers. We're about 400 away from 30,000. And I think we're going to get it uh, probably during February for sure. And, of course, tell all your friends about the show. And if you need us, let us know. Give us a text, 956 956- 641-3241 and we want to thank AJ Castillo and his dad Arturo for coming over man we really appreciate you coming over guys thank you for having us brother yeah. we, we appreciate thank you. it man thank right. you for thank treating you. us it's todo, love brother everybody wave. 956 yes Puro sir everybody wave at the camera and uh, say good night to all our fans from nationwide coast to coast border to border Mexico and Canada I want to raise you